Alright, so effectively since the last stream, we added a bunch of different things that, um... Now you can run anything that QMU can run, and basically you take a snapshot direct directly from QMU. So, QMU runs on Windows, Linux, FreeBSD, literally everything. So as long as you can run QMU and you can run your target inside of QMU, whether that's Windows, FreeBSD, OSX, Linux, whatever you care about, uh, we can actually port that into this and, and start fuzzing it with a hypervisor, which is really fucking cool. Um, and also nothing's preventing you from lifting an image from a real system as well. You would just have to have a way of getting that snapshot, which is, which is a hard problem. So I don't expect a lot of people to have that. So if we take a look at, what did I call this? Source test fuzzer. So I have a test fuzzer here. This is basically what you write as a user. Uh, I create a fuzz session and I say from this snapshot, start a fuzz case. You give it a timeout, a routine to call to inject your input in. Um, and then I have some like debugging stuff. Here I have it parsing the module list. Um, source VTX. And then coverage right now. Oops, kernel source, uh, snapshot at app. If we take a look at report coverage, and I'm gonna be switching this over to bulk report coverage to decrease the network trends, uh, the network times, I guess. But if we do this, this should just work with coverage. I don't know what the snapshot is doing. It's literally just whatever happens to be there. So if I delete the coverage file, I run this, I reboot the server, that will come online, and we're getting coverage reported in, and we're getting 2,000 fuzz cases a second on a single core. Um, and if we look at the coverage file, this has kernel addresses, which we don't have symbolization for. But for things in user land, we actually can see the modules and offsets of the code that's executing. And that's the entire workflow right there. Instantaneously, this whatever it is, uh, files. Uh, this is out.falkdump. This is a four gig snapshot. So, and if I didn't have this coverage stuff reporting right now, because that's actually slowing me down, that's my bottleneck. Um, that's her writing a TCP stack. <laughs> if I didn't have that, if we run this server here, we will find that immediately, I reset it, immediately we're getting fuzz cases. It takes under a second, under a second to start a uh, four gigabyte Windows snapshot and resume it, and then we're resetting it 2.2 thousand times a second. That is only on a single core, and this is a quad core machine, so if we turn on all cores here, it'll be the exact same thing, but this will just bring on the cores. So if I reset this, oops, um, I think I have to reset again. So if I reset this, downloads that file, and now we're running instantaneously we're running 6,400 fuzz cases a second. Just starts right away. Now our overhead is actually much less than that. So if I changed init's master VM and I just said um, uh, worker dot worker dot VM dot set reg register RIP and I'm just gonna set RIP to garbage. I'm just gonna guess that that's probably not mapped in, but it might be. <laughs> um, I think this is in create VTX. So this will this will basically show uh, how quickly we can reset. Oh, that's actually going to um, that's gonna still execute because that's just gonna be a page fault. So what do I want to clobber here? I guess I'll set CR three to something invalid. This might panic on invalid VM state. Um, failed to get module list. I'll just get rid of this. That's just so I get the module offsets. And this will basically show the overhead. Yeah. So on this quad core machine, the overhead of my VM, the overhead of my actual execution environment, uh, allows me to do 3.5 million fuzz cases a second. Um, so basically, as long as your target takes longer to execute than that, you will run basically 100% at native speed of your execution, of, of your program's execution. But yeah, that's 3.5 million fuzz cases a second. It's doing nothing, right? The VMs are entering and exiting, but this is showing the overhead costs of the VM. This is on a quad-core machine. This is like a $500 server. 
Like super, super cheap, $200 processor, I think. Like super budget hardware. So yeah, that's where we're at now. So yeah, at this point, you can, you can fuzz Linux, Windows, whatever the fuck you want in this environment, and you'll get... This is your... This is basically your baseline performance number until you start adding things that take time, but if they're taking time to execute, well, I can't speed them up, right? If your program takes one second to execute, I can't make, I can't make your program run faster. I can't make your stuff run faster than it already does, but I do use like less than 5% overhead on pretty much anything you're doing. So, um, yeah, that's where we are. I'm actually super excited about that because... This is this is likely the fastest VM reset in the world. <laughs> There's probably nothing even close to this speed, to be honest. So, and I still think there's room for like 20% improvement on reset times. But yeah, that's that's where we're at. So we're gonna add a TCP stack so I can bulk report coverage because you'll find if I report coverage, if I put all this stuff back to normal. Um, and then I put this back where I actually report coverage. You'll see that it actually takes like two seconds for the VMs to start, uh, which is just a lot longer than it should take. So here we go. One, two seconds, three seconds. So it takes about three seconds for the VMs to start, uh, which I would consider unacceptable because they're bottlenecking on basically, they're bottlenecking on about 20,000 round trips. Right, or like 10,000 round trips over the network. And even if you have 0.1 millisecond of ping, uh, in this case, the Linux UDP stack is like 0.3 to 0.5, and that lines up. It takes about three seconds to handle the 10,000 packets I get. Um, obviously, I could thread my server and stuff, and we'll do that. But the correct way to do it is to switch to TCP and then batch the coverage reporting. So maybe only report the coverage every 500 milliseconds and report all of it when you have that coverage. So yeah, we're going to write a TCP stack. How's that sound? How does that sound, everyone? Ugh. Get hydrated a little bit here. Get some music going. And I think we'll be ready to party in a second here. All right. So right in the TCP stack, I already kind of got some of the boilerplate stuff out. Um, but none of this stuff builds or works or does anything yet. So we're going to have to start writing it right away, which is, um, I don't know. I think it's going to take probably eight hours. I think it's doable in like three or four, but we're going to make a lot of mistakes. Uh, and, and we're going to probably spend 30 minutes to debug every mistake we make. So it's probably going to take uh, this whole stream to write this TCP stack. Um, but... Shouldn't be too bad. So let's take a look at, um, let's just pull in TCP here. Include this module. Okay, yep, and that's just failing immediately. But we'll take a look, uh, basically what we have to do here. So what we have to do here is we have to add a TCP stack to our, our custom kernel. And to do that uh, basically requires that we hook into our existing network stack that can send and receive UDP and raw packets. Uh, and inside of here, we're going to basically make a way that you can bind to a port. And then once you bind bound to a port, you can then send and receive uh, TCP transactions. And I might actually call this connect rather than bind because that's a little bit more accurate to what we're going to be doing. Um, so we're going to try and figure out how we want to do that. Um, but basically we'll probably have TCP connect. That'll give you a TCP connection. And then that will register in the network tables to log the packets when they come in and respond to these things. Because if we have two TCP uh, sessions going at once, um, there's going to be situations where the packet comes in that's destined to a different port, and we actually need to know where we save those packets. So we're going to need to have, similar to UDP, we need to have kind of a queue of packets pending for different ports, and I think we'll just automatically respond to them. So 
I don't 100% know how I want to structure this yet, but I think effectively you're going to do like connect TCP. You're going to give it a uh, probably an address and it'll give you a connection. It'll do the SYNAC three-way hand, handshake and it'll probably try and get all that out to you. I think, I think that's the plan. Like... The API that I want effectively is probably going to be, um, I'll get access to a net device, which is done via, oops, kernel source net snaps, uh, network mapping, net mapping, net device. So let's see, we're just going to kind of pseudocode how we want this to look. And then we'll try to implement it to that pseudocode, which might be difficult. Um, we might have to change the way we do some things, but I'm not sure. So we'll do netdev.connect TCP, or maybe TCP under connect. I think we'll do TCP under connect. And then we'll give it an IP and a port 2000. Um, and then that's going to return a result. So we'll unwrap that result. Because the connection is actually, uh, comms will actually occur during that stage. So this is roughly what I want. And then at this point, this will be a, a TCP is equal to this. And I should be able to do tcp.send, ASDF, and tcp.receive. And this will probably just go into a buffer. Something like this. Let's mute buff uh, OU81024, something like that. So that's basically how it's going to be implemented. Here we'll pull in use net, net device. And that looks pretty clean. Okay, so that's roughly what uh, the API is going to look like for how we do TCP sending and receiving. Um, now we just have to implement it. <laughs> More work on the network stack. Something I have experience in again. Oh, you, you're gonna be uh, you're gonna be cringing this whole time, dude. <laughs> okay, so when we bind to UDP, we're just gonna do this. We're gonna do um, or TCP. We're actually gonna core this out. So here we're gonna get a port. So this is um, let port is equal to this. This will get a new ephemeral port. So this is, um, get a new ephemeral port. And this is gonna be our TCP connect here. Um, and then this is just gonna break some bind. And then here we just do that. Uh, port is none. Go through this. Port is this break. Uh, as, oh. I think that, yeah, that goes away. Um, oh, we're going to try to bind to that. Oh, uh, yeah, maybe we need to do a loop here. This is going to be attempt to connect to a... Uh, TCP server, and this is going to be TCP connect, and we're going to have server, this is the server and IP, and I think that's it. This is on the net device, so we'll have a net device, this will return a TCP bind. Okay, yeah, we're going we're gonna to just write all of this code new, uh, TCP connected. That TCP connection is actually good. So we'll call this a TCP connection, reference to the network device we are bound on and the port we are bound to. Um, okay. So we're gonna have TCP binds. That's what's going to hold, that's going to hold the connections, I guess. So we just do this loop uh, for this 
So we're looping for the maximum number of ephemeral ports. And then here, this will be like none could not get a connection. And this will be con continue. Um, port already bound, continue. All right, so we're gonna go through, this is uh, go through all ephemeral ports. Oops, then we're going to get a new unique port number. We're going to bind to that port. Nope, that is this code. We're going to get access to the TCP binds. We're going to check if this port is already bound. If it's not bound, then we're going to initialize it with a new queue that'll hold the bytes that we have received. And then we're going to release the lock in the TCP binds and then we'll return out the TCP bind. And in this case, this will just straight return it. And this is a TCP connection. Um, okay, cur self. I'm gonna somehow have to get an arc for the self. I think this is going to take a TCP, uh, an arc net device because you're going to have to pass it a copy of that uh, TCP connection turn out a TCP connection I'm not going to call that TCP binds I'm going to call that TCP connection that's a net TCP binds TCP connections and then we'll just reformat some of this code to look better. Oh, that just barely fits in one line. Okay, that's ballpark what we want. Eight. Not found the scope TCP bind. Yep, this is TCP connection. That looks pretty ballpark. 19. Can't use self. This will be, yep, cur. Okay, associated function. Unknown field. TCP binds. Yep, TCP binds. Okay. Yeah, I guess here we get a port. We go through all the ports. We then check if that port is currently bound. If that port is bound, if if that port is bound, then we can't use it. If it isn't bound, then we initialize that port with a new mapping, and we return out the connection. Okay. Wow. Easy. Super easy. So now this is not happy because we want to do net device t connect and then we'll pass it the net dev and this should now work obviously these things don't exist the sends and receives don't work but that builds and it'll run obviously it does nothing yet all right so at this point we want to actually create we return a tcp connection and then i think i'll just do um I think maybe before I reserve that connection, well, I want to create that connection here. And then that connection is going to, yeah, yeah. Similar to what we did, kernel source net UDP. We want to implement drop for TCP connection. And we want to unbind from the, from this. So what we'll do is we will get access to the TCP connections on the curve, which is self device. We'll lock those and then we'll do um, self or TCP connections, remove ref self dot ports, expect failed to remove ports that TCP port was bound. 
Should never happen. And this is remove the connection from the TCP connections. Beautiful. All right, so this should print uh, print dropping connection for port, and then we can do self tap port. We'll eventually want to probably do an active close here. But, yep, dropping connection for the port. So I just wanted to make sure that code was executing, and it does. So at this point, we have returned, we've allocated a new unique port, we've bound that port in our ephemeral port listings, and that's going to allow us to, yeah, basically have a port that we can use, and now we just need to figure out a, um, I guess I'm going to resolve what I want to communicate with, which is a net address. So we'll do um, let target is equal to our server net address new. Uh, it's like resolve, I think. I think. Let's take a look. Kernel source. Eh. Kernel source net net mapping. Shouldn't port numbers be random? Otherwise, you have a security risk. I'm not too worried about it. I could pick a random number, but it's you. You have a security risk regardless, right? You you can always you can always try and bind. You can always try and hijack all the packets. It's really only a secure like it makes it easier, but it's still regardless. It's not a secure protocol, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, same for like using a random identifier for the, um, for like the TCP window, like the, so we get the right TCP window. In this case, it just doesn't matter because this isn't really meant to be a secure implementation anyways. Ref cur port. And then server. Uh, and we want to create this so that it gets dropped. So this is con is equal to this. This is like create. We could we could randomize the ports. It's pretty trivial to do. I think originally they needed to be sequential, but yeah, I can I can randomize them. We can just do like CPU RDTSC, which is not really random, but it's close. <laughs> um, I want to do the same thing in UDP then. Before when I wrote this code, I had to, I had to like explicitly, and then this will be like the number of attempts. Try a hundred thousand times to find a free port. Okay, RDTSC mod that. Yeah, originally when I did this, I actually had to do sequential because I didn't have a way of knowing if they're actually in use. But now that we have that, we might as well randomize it because it actually simplifies the code. Um, what's going on here? There we go. I think we got it right now. Net address, we gotta pull that in. And then this is going to have like port, dynamic port, put that away. All right. This will pull in net address and we'll resolve that. So we'll create the connection, then we'll result, resolve the address. So this is resolve the address for the server using ARP. Um, I guess, yeah, I kind of want to do it there, but then I have to have this be none, or I can just do this. Yeah, but I kind of want that guard structure. I want that port to get freed if we fail to connect.
I guess... This is fine for now. And then this returns a connection. A sum returns some connection. Curve moved here. Yep. Connection device. Okay, and then that, I don't want this to fuzz. Oh, it's not fuzzing. Okay, that number is just counting down. All right. So at this point, we can start doing TCP, I think. We just got to start making the packets, which is, I guess we'll just look at it on Wikipedia. I think that's probably going to be the easiest way. Um... Should be pretty straightforward. There we go. Just barely fits on there. Okay, so we're gonna do, we're gonna have a TCP header. Um, I guess I implement that on packet. Impl packets. FN TCP, create TCP. What do I call it for UDP? Create, okay. It's just gonna be this. So create TCP, we're gonna make a TCP packet. We have an address. And this is going to form it, and then we'll probably... I don't know how I'm going to handle all the flags. I don't know if I'll pass in structure. There are a bunch of different ways I can do this. This is, creates a new TCP packet. Okay. Yeah, how do I want to do this? I guess, let's see what we did in UDP. And we'll inline this. That returns a UDP builder. Yeah, we want to do the same thing. We want to make a TCP builder. TDP. TCP. <laughs> Thank you, Nightshade. We're going to do... TCP builder. And this is going to look the same, I think, as a UDP builder. We're going to have a packet, which is self. We're going to have an address, which is the adder, and then we're going to have a UDP payload, a TCP payload, which is zero. Um, I do like these builders. These are really cool. These are really cool. I'm actually just going to yoink that whole thing because we're, we're just going to, we're just going to do a lot of the same stuff. UDP for creating TCP packets in place. TCP, TCP, TCP payload, TCP builder, TCP reserve size bytes, TCP, make sure it fits within that. It's not 1472. This is how big? TCP header is, uh, we're gonna be, we're probably gonna do 24 bytes because we're probably going to use an option field so we can use the, um, so we can have the dynamic window size, a larger window size than the uh, 64K, which is a pretty small window size. So I think we will always send packets with the size set, um, which would then mean we have 24 byte packets. So 1500 um, minus 24 is 1476. Oh, is that it? Is it just 1476? No, there's an IP header in there too, which is 20 bytes. So 1456. Yeah, so you can do 1456, I think. Okay. 
Okay, so update the payload size, TCP payload, copy, return a slice. So this is 14. That is the MAC header, 20 is the IP header, and then 24 is going to be our TCP header. Okay, and then we have a TCP builder, TCP payload, TCP payload, TCP payload, 24, 24, TCP, TCP payload. Oh, that's so we can serialize it. And then this is 1456 as well. Um, then we're going to have TCP builder. All right, we're going to set the Ethernet for header. We're going to set the TCP for the IP header. And then this is where we'd have TCP here. So that's where we're going to have TCP. And then at this point, this will be 24 bytes. So 142024, 20, and that should be equal to 15, 18 minus 4 minus 14 minus 20 minus 24. Oops. Shit. I typoed real hard in my calculator. 15, 16 divided by, or minus, or 15, 15, 18 minus 4 bytes for the FCS. 14 bytes for the MAC header, 20 bytes for the IP header, 24 bytes for the TCP header. That puts us at 1456. You'll need to consider options. Timestamping and window scaling are somewhat important for performant connections. Um, for this, I'm just going to need the, uh, the window scaling. I don't think I'm going to need timestamping for this. Um, but who knows? Maybe we will. Use a physical calculator? Oh my god, yeah. Dude, physical calculators are so much better. That tactile feedback. I can I can type probably five times faster on my physical calculator than I could do on a computer. Um crate nets eth type IPv4 IP proto TCP. And I don't know what TCP is. IP. Um, maybe IP will talk about it. When, what is, uh, what is timestamping heroic? I am curious. I can guess what it is, but I don't know it too well. I use speed crunch. What is speed crunch? Oh, shit. Can you do hex in this by any chance? This looks pretty good. How do you do hex? Oh, you just hex. Okay, this might be this might be the shit then. Okay, five plus five, hex five plus five. Holy shit, dude, this is amazing. Okay, I need to remember to use that, but that is fucking sick. Thank you so much. As long as it works on Windows and Linux, I'm happy. Speed crunch looks six, yeah. You can make it use hex by default. Many numbers display formats. That's so fucking sweet. In the new iteration, you can bounce back timestamps sent by the remote at specific packets containing data segments, which allows 
calculating latency and loss, and thus is an important basis for congestion elgs. Oh, I see. Um, oh, wow, it keeps your history, too. That's sick. Um, okay. What is IP? So I don't think we're going to really have any congestion stuff going on, but we'll maybe add that flag if it's not hard to add. What is it, just like a timestamp in microseconds or something? Do you know what looks sick? What looks sick? What is, what is the type? Type, TCP, six. No, it looks like this stream, hell yeah, thank you so much, man. We'll pull a noodle in here too. Um, use noodle writer. I am glad that other people will be here when I do TCP because I'm, I'm gonna make a lot of mistakes. I'm gonna make a lot of mistakes, right? And I think it's really, really nice to have people here who actually understand networking because I would not be able to get a lot of this stuff right. This is two plus 24. 1420, yep. 20 plus 24. And this is TCP payload. I should just call it payload, but whatever. So that's going to calculate all the lengths. This is going to send effectively a, a malformed TCP packet. So let's try it. We're going to do uh, packet is equal to um, connection device dot um connection dot device dot allocate packet i think is what my api is god i'm brilliant <laughs> i'm starting to like know how to use my uh, own protocol at this point so here i'm going to do a packet now on packet i can do create udp or tcp and what did that take as an argument the function we literally just fucking wrote <laughs> the function we just literally wrote a network address server so this is let packet is equal to this create a new tcp packet and then we can do packet copy from slice or actually write what do i what do i use to this i think i use write yeah I think I can just literally write ASDF, and that's going to write it in place of the packet, which is so fucking cool. I actually really like the way that I'm doing this. Uh, connection. I need to resolve that server. So we'll resolve the server, and then here we'll have server. Allocate a packet. And then here we can do um, connection device send packet. Make this mute. And I think we're good. Um, oh, and then a flush. We'll always flush it. And then mute packet here. Dude, this is cool. So that'll create a TCP packet, and then when that gets dropped, when this goes out of scope, it'll actually compute the length and fill in the headers. So it basically allows us to write directly to the payload, and then once we actually are done, it'll update because it knows all the lengths at that point. So that's basically the design there. So let's take a look at TCP dump, um, TCP, how do I do that? I can, I can filter by port, right? Uh, port equals or something. Uh, TCP dump, TCP port range, 2000, X. Fuck. We type. Oh, we got it right. Okay, so this should send one TCP packet. Oh, what port did we specify in our test? 2000. Okay. Oh, it's a malform packet right now. Can I just say port range? 
Huh. Huh. Let's just try UDP quick. UCP. UDP. Uninsane clown posse. Some middle boxes and hosts that refuse a TCP connection if you don't indicate those? Okay. Hey! So there's a TCP. Or, or UDP. So this is TCP. This is doing the same logic. I'm guessing it's just malformed. Oh, it's getting dropped because I don't calculate the TCP checksum. 100%. It's just getting dropped. Can I put this in promiscuous? Can I ignore checksum somehow? There's got to be a way. TCP dump. Ignore checksum. Is that by default? Um, it seems like it is by default. Do I need to specify the specific interface? Um. Verbose. Huh. I mean, it's definitely sending the packet. Oh, I don't have a TCP port filled in at all yet. Never mind. I'm just being silly. Sorry, y'all. Okay, so we just gotta make the TCP header. This is easy. So, um, that's IP header. Set up the TCP header. TCP header, TCP header. This is from 14 to 20 to 1420 plus 24 for now. We'll probably change that because we will add your windowing stuff um, if that seems important. TCP size, TCP, TCP. Obviously, we need our checksum, but an invalid checksum will be fine here. Okay, so we have the source port, then the destination port, big Indian. Then we have the sequence number, TCP four to eight, copy from slice, self address. Um, I'm just going to write in a zero for now. Obviously, these are going to be relatively important parts of the protocol, to my knowledge. <laughs> I think I think these are a big part of TCP, if I'm not mistaken. Um, then we have a bunch of flags, TCP... I think I'll do all the flags in the data offset at the same time. So we'll do C to 10. That's yeah, to zero. So this is the sequence number. This is the acknowledgement number. This is the flags and data offsets. What else? What else? Window size. Oh, that's a... This is C to D E. And this is OX O E to OX ten. Copy from slice. OU thirty sixteen to big Indian bytes. So this is flags and data offset, and then this is window size. Windows size. Window size. We have the Checksum, and I'm just going through this table here on the on that side. Checksum zero, of course. Uh, four, 12 to 14. This is the urgent pointer. 
Sounds pretty unnecessary. So that puts us at 20 bytes, and then TCP OX 14 to 18. OU32 to begin the bytes. This is the um, option number one. So this should transmit, because we fill in the ports. Yes, there we go. So there is our completely fucked TCP packet, but we're talking TCP now. One more stack corruption risk, mostly ignored. Yeah, I'm definitely not gonna use it. Okay. So at this point, I'm able to send a TCP packet. The We have a bad header length. Makes sense. This data offset, I think, is the size in bytes. Oh, in words. So five is for minimum. Okay, so we'll say let flags is equal to, and in this case, six shift four bits plus eight. Four plus eight, that's 12. Or flags, right? Um, so this is... Uh, this is a six-word TCP header, 24 bytes. Now, incorrect checksum. But we have filled in that, and it's all happy, fine and dandy. And then the length of the payload is four bytes, which is correct. Um, oh, yeah, there's no length field here. It gets that from the IP header. But yeah, that's correct. Um, we have no flag set. Checksum is set to zero. Window, sequence, and then the length. So what we want to do is we want to figure out the option field. Um, divisible by 32 bits. Yeah, yeah. Option kind. Option length and option data. End of options list. Is that required? I guess if we just have a zero, that's fine. Just all zero is fine. The only sensible use I can see is if it were allowed for an application to do out of order peaking in the reassembly buffer, but that's largely ignored. Uh, yeah, that's fair. What what does what does it actually do? What does that what does that point to? Okay, and then TCP checksum. Checksum. I think it's this algorithm. Oh, we need to do the fake header for it. Ah, fuck. Um. I might just do checksum offloading. Because the, the checksum sucks. Right, we got to make the pseudo header. I might just do offload. All series is valid padding in any and all cases. Yeah, sweet. Seems very similar to DHCP in that regard. Oops. Um. Offload. Let's see how hard it is to get offload. I've literally never done checksum offloading. I've always done checksumming myself, but every fucking network card supports it. So I'm gonna actually require that the network card driver is responsible for doing the checksumming if your NIC doesn't support it because none of my NICs that I have drivers for don't have it. So 
Just not something I care about. Urgent pointer is an offset into the segment of the packet itself. Oh, weird. Um, transmission. Legacy format. Checksum offset. Indicates where, relative to the start of the packet, to insert the TC a TCP checksum if this mode is enabled. IC bit is set in TDesk CMD. Hardware ignores CSO unless EOP is set in the desk. CSO is provided in a unit of bytes and must be in the range of the data provided. Should be written as zero for future compatibility. It literally looks like it's going to insert a TCP checksum there. That's my interpretation, is it's literally going to put a TCP checksum there. So let's, uh, let's see if we can just try that. We're going to need to change send. That goes to driver, and driver implements uh, net, device, net driver. I think what I'll do is I'll do fn send tcp packet flush uh, send a raw frame over the network connection um, send a tcp frame over the network blah, blah blah the driver must insert the tcp checksum um, into the packet offset and we're only doing IP right now so it's only ever going to be at uh, I guess what is that offset 14 plus 20 that's the IP and then the offset into the TCP header I've never done offload I'm so excited for this um plus 12 bytes. So that's 46 bytes. Offset 46, I think. Linux supports urgent data and TCP. Just one single byte, though. Oh. Single byte out of van data. Wow. That's a lot of that's a lot of read ahead. <laughs> Uh, net driver. Hey, Magic Wizard, how are you doing? Maybe I'll just do this. I think send, since it's already raw, this is going to have, like, offloads. Yeah, 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 and then we'll do this. Pubstruct offloads. Um, offloads that the network cards may support. And we're just going to say um, TCP checksum option U16. And this is insert a TCP checksum at offset U16. And that's associated with this packet. Maybe I'll set it on the packet. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, send TCP. Because that takes... That already takes an actual packet. And this is going to be um, TCP. Check some... Option U16, this is uh, offset to the location in bytes in the packet for the NIC to insert or offload a TCP checksum. And then by default, TCP checksum, none. Um... FN TCP checksum, mute self, offsets, U16, self.tcp checksum is some offset, and this is uh, 
request a TCP checksum will be inserted by the NIC at offset. Five thirty two send TCP. Okay, then here I can say um, God, I need to change up my music a bit. Okay, there we go. Do -do -do. Okay, so we fill in the descriptor and then the command field. If the IC bit, the insert checksum bit. Needs to insert a checksum at that. IC is ignored if CSO and CCS are out of the packet range. Okay. So we'll say... Um, Uh, TX desk status CSS CSS right check some start okay uh, CSS is um, packet dot TCP checksum unwrap or zero. Okay, and then we'll just change that to a U8 if that's what it takes. Okay, then in the nick, this can do or packet.tcp checksum. If this is sum, then one shift I see, I think it was two, bit two, else zero. Do that. So that'll indicate to use the uh, include checksum flag. Bit three, report status. Nice. One shift two. Okay, so now I just have to set that checksum. Um, when I create a TCP packet at the end, this is uh, indicates we need a TCP checksum inserted. And we'll do self dot packet dot TCP checksum. Um, 14 plus 20 plus 12 bytes. I should do it. Okay, did we miss? I think we missed. That's quick magic. See you around, Melhante. Um, 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 Fuck. Oh, I'm not leaving? Good. Good. <laughs> oh, did I say something was magic? <laughs> um. On that four zero. If it's sum, then we set that. Let's see if we just put it at zero, if that'll clobber it. My work day has only just begun. I'll be here all day. Oh, I think it is inserting the checksum. Let's put this at hex 30. I think I just have the offset wrong.
Um, no, it's not inserting it there. Or is it putting a zero in? Let's go to 22C and see if we can write over the DF. This is hard coding some offsets. No big deal. Hmm. Insert checksum. At the offset indicated by the CSO field, it's performed for the entire packet starting at the byte by the CCS field. Oh. Oh, check some start field or CSS. A value of zero corresponds to the first byte. Yeah, but I would still expect that would fill in. I still expect that would fill it in. Um, if I take. Oh, this is the CSO, and this is the CSS. Okay, this should work. This is going to clobber it now. Okay. Wait. Hardware ignores CSO unless EOP is set. It is set. Relative to add a checksum offset. I'm new here. Can someone give me some background? We're writing an operating system here, and we're just working on a TCP stack so we can communicate over the network in a reliable way. We already have a UDP stack, but... I was starting to have issues with not having reliability. There are a couple things that I wanted to implement that kind of required TCP. So we're just, we're implementing TCP because it's easier than making our own custom thing built on top of EDP. Buffer address length. Um... Where to start computing it? Must compute this offset to be to back out the bytes that should not be included in the TCP checksum. What? It's recommended you use the newer descriptor format. Newer descriptor format allows the hardware to calculate both the IP and TCP checksums. Oh yeah, maybe we should just use the new descriptor format. Special field VLAN tags. Okay, transmit descriptors. So this is the original 64-bit address, legacy mode, and non-legacy mode, D-type, and R. Dext. Wait, where's the length and stuff? Probably you didn't have to supply a pre-calculated pseudo IP header checksum. Maybe I do. Maybe I do. Tdesk command. Magic wizard, welcome back. Hell yeah, long time no see. <laughs> It's been minutes. Um, T 
two other descriptor types. This descriptor type is called the TCPIP data descriptor. Is a replacement for the legacy because it has new offloading. I don't know. I feel like I still should be able to use this. The legacy. Fuck. How did I how did I get this to work? CSO, CSS. Now we're not getting a packet. Not a good sign. Let's go to hex 10. That's where the checksum start occurs. See, that's not inserting the checksum. Where? Relative to the start of the packet. Nothing in here looks like it's getting filled in. Oh, this. Oh, this isn't showing me the Mac header. I think that's what it filled in. Oh, hell yeah. Uh huh, huh, huh. Check some incorrect. So this is going to be at offset is 14 plus 20 plus 12. Fuck, how did I get this to work? Okay. Bad header length. Too short. I'm clobbering something here. Isn't that the start of the... How do I get this verbose? I want to see the whole frame. I want to see the Mac header as well. There we go. Now we have the Mac header. Okay. So this is inserting 14 plus 20 plus 12. Mac that plus that. Which is here. Um, yeah, this is the destination port, the source port. Okay, 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 okay. One, two, three, four for the sequence number. One, two, three, four for that. Oh, it's not four of those. Uh, Desk source sequence acknowledge. Is that not 12 bytes? 12 bytes offset into that. 14 plus 20 plus 12. Plus. Oh my god, it's plus 16. Holy shit. We're sweating. We're sweating. All right, so this should fill in a checksum. Oh, uh, let's have this use that. So that's the offset. And then the checksum start is at a different address that we'll have to compute. All right, checksum this, incorrect, should be 0836. OK, so now we're filling in the checksum field. Well, the nick is. And then we just have to tell it the start of the checksum field. I don't think we have to give it a pseudo header. I actually have no idea what I'm supposed to give it here, but we're just gonna try random stuff until it works, right? We're programmers. Um, offset, this will be U8, U8. So this is the um, checksum start offset and checksum offset for TCP checksum offload. Um, at offset dot one and the checksum will be computed starting from offset dot zero. OK. 
Okay. Unwrap or zero. Mm. Dot map. X. The offset is this. And the start is this. Okay, so that's incorrect. Now the question is, do I just point out the data or do I read the manual? Um, where would they mention that? Offload. Segmentation offload, we're not using that. Offload transmit descriptor status field. That's okay, that's for those descriptors. Where does this talk about offloading? Here we go. Um, oh, they don't talk about it, do they? CSO, actually CSS. Um, Indicates where to become begin computing it. Must compute this offset to the to back out the bytes that should not be included in the TCP checksum. Provided in units of bytes and must be in the range specified. For short packets that are padded. Do I think do I give that the offset to the data? Does it make the header for me? I don't think so. I don't think it's that smart. Yeah, but now we're getting the same checksum. Unless it's actually summing that with the checksum field. Like, do I have to fill that in with the... Maybe I do have to... Yeah... Um, padded by software, must be in the range of that. Length of 0B corresponds to the first byte in the packet. Ooh. I'm guessing I just include the checksum. I probably pre-compute the the pseudo checksum and I put it in the checksum field and then I compute from 20 and beyond. I'm gonna guess that's what I'm supposed to do. And then that'll then be included in the checksum because it's part of it. That's gonna be my guess. So I give it the offset to start the TCP checksum, the offset to insert it, and it's inserting it, but obviously incorrectly. And then I want to fill in the checksum field. I'm going to have to do the pseudo header, which is what I was dreading because it sucks. I hate this stuff. Source dust. Your mic is super low. Um... It looks like it's at normal levels for me. Like, I guess it's technically like a little bit not facing towards my mouth, but it's it's pretty pretty standard.
Um. So does that mean I just have to do these? I just have the sourced and dest address, I'm pretty sure. Because these will be included. So I'll take the source and the dest and the protocol and the TCP length, and then I will check some just those fields. I'll place them in the checksum field, and then I'll check some the whole fucking packet. And then I think I'm good. I think that's the strategy here. So let's do a shit. Um, make the pseudo header for the checksum. And this is let mute pseudo is equal to OU8 for four, uh, 12 bytes. No problem, Sappy. Pseudo copy from slice. Self dot adder dot source adder. I think it's called source address. Source IP. Dest IP. And this is to four. This is four to eight. Then pseudo twelve. Copy from slice. Is the length in the protocol? So length is what is protocol? It's six. Okay, that's what I would have thought. Um. So is this just six shift sixteen? So U32, or the length of the TCP, the TCP length, is that the length of the data? Header and data, okay. So that is 24 plus um, self TCP payload. Okay, that's the pseudo header. Or that. Okay. Oh, two big Indian bytes. Big Indian bytes. There we go. Um, guessing that has the actual thing. Okay. Pseudo, and we typed it wrong. Now, that should work, and then we just have to bang in that checksum. So this will be packet checksum pseudo. Check some. Uh, it starts off at zero, I think. Oh, I hate I hate computing checksums. Twelve. Oh, that's eight. Thanks, Rust. Incorrect checksum. Okay, now we just have to guess at what things we have to change. <laughs> 24 plus TCP payload. The header and data. Measured in octets. 6 shift... 16. I think that's correct. And then zeros. Um... Does it not start at zero? Do I have to XOR it or something? Hmm. 
Hmm. So I'm going to compute it on this, and then I insert it here, and then I have it checks on this whole thing. Fuck. God damn it. Do I not zero this? I mean, that shouldn't matter. That would only change it by one. Well, now I have no idea which things need to be fixed. Oh, I love checksums, man. Source address, dust address. The hat. 24 plus the payload size. Protocol is six. This is IP. We can just do that. Or TCP. Um. Oh, I hate how this is literally just guessing. Like, I, I literally just have no way to know. I guess if I pad the packet... Is that the problem? Because I'm padding the packet? I pad it to 40 hex bytes. Let's add a... Let's just change our message slightly. Where do we send that? ASDFDF. This should be exactly 64 bytes on the wire. 882D. No idea. I hate this, man. I hate this. I hate how this is going to take literally 30 minutes to figure out how to fucking check some. Nine DBF. That offset should be fine. And if I don't fill this in, if I fill this in with a zero, I should get different results. Well, yeah, I mean, that's just. Oh. It's just like fucking random, man. Start it at the hat until the padding. I guess I might have to make sure that the padding gets zeroed out, but that doesn't matter yet because we have n we have no padding. So we're going from 14 plus 20, 20 uh, 34 bytes. We're inserting inserting it there. Insert checksum. Checksum start field. CSS must be in the range of the unpaid padded data line. Yup. Um, I 
when using TCP segmentation, okay. Well, I want the CSS with the TCP. Die right with the big raids, holy shit. How is your stream, man? I haven't been streaming in a while. It's been a few days. I hope your stream's been good. Hope you had a blast. Hope you did some fun stuff. Ooh, ooh. Um. Man, this is, this is gonna be rough. My brain is ready. Hell yeah, we're we're making a TCP stack, and we're trying to calculate checksums right now, which is really difficult because <laughs> we have no idea where the checksum is going wrong. But it's wrong. To be able to can't pull Gamozo number. It's too much for me. It was good. Hell yeah, got my IDS functionality working for the most part on the IDS, dude. That's that's fucking sick, dude. Holy shit. You're like blasting through stuff now. <laughs> What's gonna be your like hello world test? Or do you already have like a bunch of tests? All right, not like test test, but like what's your, what is your first goal of like this like complete thing working? What's the first thing you want it to do? Ah, oh, fuck. Dude, I have literally no idea where this checksum is being calculated wrong. Oh, this is gonna suck. I mean, I can I can just compute the checksum myself, I guess. And once we get the checksum computing ourselves, then we can figure out what the Nick's doing. Um. It's filling in the header with the random port. So that's our checksum. So we'll just make this pseudo header, which I hate. I hate the whole pseudo header concept. Checksum I want zero. So yeah, we'll do this at the end. There we go. We'll do this. And then checksum is equal to packet checksum of packet checksum zero pseudo. So start off at pseudo and zero, then we're gonna continue that on to the TCP header side of things. <laughs> That's gonna get the TCP header, and then we want the data. I know this looks like shit, but this is, we're just testing right now. Um, then this is the payload. We set the length of the packet. Self packet dot raw. Um, um, I do have reference code for this if I really need it. Plus 20, plus 24. And then we go to 14 plus 20 plus 24 plus self dot TCP payload. And that's like gonna theoretically calculate a checksum and then we'll fill it in. I hate this, I hate checksums. We had problems with this before. I gotta make tests and shit for this. Type on 231, thank you. Oops. Okay, and then copy in the checksum. I feel like there's no fucking way we're even close. Why is that giving a U32? What? What? Oh. I don't... Uh, oh, so I can chain them. Otherwise, I wouldn't have the overlap. That makes sense. Doot, doot. U16, two Ellie bite, big Indian bites. Check some piss me off because you process shit to just to throw at it. Yeah. I like, my biggest problem is I have no way of really testing this as I'm trying it out. I just kind of have to like wing it. 
And I hope I get it fucking right. Mutable borrow. Where is it borrowed? Oh, yeah, yeah, Um. Doesn't like it here? No, it doesn't like it here. Uh, we can drop that. And we have to copy this into 14 plus 20 plus 10. 14 plus 20. Oh, we're, we're hacking, right? We're just trying to get this to work. Oh my god, you're killing me here. Oh, I still use it here. Oops, self-packet.raw. We're trying, we're trying. We're just randomly trying stuff until it works. Okay, so this is wrong. So this checksum is wrong. So there's anything is potentially wrong here. The pseudo header could be wrong. The way that we initialize things could be wrong. <laughs> so we really have no idea at all what it could be. <laughs> we just have to completely guess and entirely just guess the fuck we're doing wrong. Source IP, dust IP, check some, check some that, and then we check some the TCP header where the checksum is zero. Um go here. I mean I, I like I know the format of the checksum, I just don't know exactly uh source dust. Yeah, all this shit. Where's the here's the pseudo header. Um Oh, they don't Do I not talk about the pseudo header? Cuz it, it's just it's just this header. Um, I don't think this talks to the computation of it at all. Unless I'm doing this wrong. Oh, here we go. Here we go. There's the pseudo header. 32-bit IP reserved all zeros. Oh, one byte. Then the protocol, it's a six. TCP length. So it looked like this. That's what I do. Unless I'm doing this wrong. That shift 16, I don't think so. Shift 16, yep, protocol will be there. And then we two big Indian bytes. Unless this is supposed to be two Ellie bytes here, do the way I calculate it with that or, but I don't think so. Um, yeah, it's de this is definitely correct, uh, cause this will put, the first byte this will put on the wire will be the zero, then the TCP, then the 24 plus the TCP payload. The segment length is, um, then the checksum is computed over the entire set of data, that plus the segment, um, Placed into that. Pseudo header's not actually transmitted. Yep, checksum goes here. Um, checksum to zero before the calculation. Calculating the variable length TCP and IP headers. Yeah, in this case, everything should be fixed length. 24 bytes for the size of the header. Right, this should be exactly, if we do 25 here, this should fail. Nice. Yep, because that's length 24. Um, unless I can't chain these checksums like this. Maybe the way that I'm chaining these checksums is broken. Because I'm doing, I'm passing them in as a already initialized checksum value. No, that should be fine. Should totally be fine. 
Because I just add that in. Invert the whole thing. Maybe I'm not supposed to be inverting it. Oh, I'm probably only supposed to be inverting it once. I'm guessing that's the problem. I'm guessing that's the problem. Is maybe that inversion? Mm, let's just try it. This will make the IP header broken, so Linux might not receive this packet. Yeah, that breaks the IP checksum. Not even getting a lease anymore, that makes sense. Um, I mean, I can just invert it again down here. So every time I do this, we can just invert those. Nope. Not even close. So who, who fucking knows, man? Oh, I hate this shit, man. It's just miserable. We'll just do everything on the pseudo header for now. Um, copy the whole TCP header onto here. And then... <laughs> My life is not miserable. <laughs> this is miserable. <laughs> Making checksums sucks, man. It's fucking awful. And they're not even like standardized checksums at all. 12 plus 24 plus. Plus. Self. TCP. Actually, we can just do this. From 12 to this. Uh, 24 plus. Oh, I was doing it wrong. Let's go back to the pseudo. This. No, those offsets are correct. Fuck. Right after the pseudo header, we're going to have 24 bytes for the IP header, and then we're going to have the TCP checksum. And we're gonna copy. This is literally gonna take longer than it's gonna take to implement fucking TCP. Like the entire protocol will take less time than this checksum. And it's so annoying. It's just so fucking stupid. Um, yep, so we're gonna have to slice this up. And we're gonna have to drop TCP. And we'll copy in the checksum. We'll copy in. This is the 14 plus 20 plus 24 plus self TCP checksum, right? Um. Oh, payload. Okay, so we copy all this to the pseudo header. Oh my god, I can't even write code anymore. Let checksum is equal to packet checksum zero pseudo. I iterate on a loose loop twice. First loop I calculate the checksum with it zeroed. Second iteration I pack it, yeah. Okay, well, that's fucking wrong. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is going to be... We're going to check some for... Honestly, we should be able to check some for the whole thing. Oh, and then this is to 12 now. That's what it was. Okay. Hey, it's correct! Okay, okay. 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 Uh huh. So we know that the checksum stuff works. 
And then this... We're going to drop TCP, and then we're going to check some this thing. Let's try this. Not quite. Oh, yeah. There's no checksum. Oh. This is packet checksum on the sudo starting at zero. So maybe I do have to invert it. Or maybe it's the way that I copy in the, the carries. Maybe I can't chain the carries like that. Incorrect. All right. So this is just the bytes. So that's the same. This is the only stuff that differs during finalization is I copy in the carries and then I invert the checksum. Ooh, and then I Indian swap it. Ooh, from BE. Mm hmm. So we're just going to like undo that shit. Too big Indian. Okay. Oh, and that's U16 from BE. I could also just manually invert it on the other side. We'll see. I'm not, I'm not sure yet how I want to do that. Eh, I just need some more parens somewhere, I think. Nah, we don't. This should work. Fuck. That literally undoes this. The carries just copy over anyways. The, the carries shouldn't matter. So... 14 plus 20. From the raw packet, we first computed on the pseudo header. We compute it natively. Uh, so we do it in place. Um, from Big Indian, that'll revert it back, and then we not it. What? Incorrect. Oh, I hate everything about this. This is miserable. I hate checksums. I hate how they're knotted at the end like this. So I can't really chain these, right? So I want to convert them back to native Indian from big Indian. That undoes that, and then we knot it. How is that different than doing everything in one go? How is that different? What? What? How is that different? And then we just wrapping out that. Unless it's the carries. Unless it's literally the carries. But that makes no sense. Take the checksum, not it.
Take the checksum and knot it. From Big Indian. 14 plus 20. 14 plus 20 plus... Ooh. Uh, that's probably it. Hey! We correct now. Okay, so... I'm guessing what I need to do is I need to fill in that checksum here. Packet. Checksum. Pseudo. And then we have to undo that. Hmm. Okay, so now we're going to try this. Let's try this. <coughs> Set the length. Indicate where to insert. 215. Starts at zero. Two big ending bytes. Oh, yeah, that's going to flip it again. It's a native ending bytes. Ref that. And then we need to invert it, <coughs> and I think we're fine. God damn it. Make the pseudo header. Here we go. Make the pseudo header. Incorrect. Um, I think we're close. I think we literally just need to invert it now, and I think we're fine. So we'll not that, and then we'll native Indian write it out. Son of a bitch. Um, 14 plus 20. What is that possibly computing on? I fucking hate this. Once this is done, we're going to actually just write TCP and it'll take five minutes. But this shit, man. Fucking checksums. They suck, dude. They're so stupid. Not that. It's a big Indian. That'll bite swap it again. I don't think that's what I want. Hey, that's correct. Okay, that's that's the combo right there. <laughs> Don't fucking touch that code. All right, we did it. All right, now let's see what happens if we send a small packet, because I think I buffer out packets. I'm guessing if I send a small packet, we're gonna have problems. First try, oh yeah. Not even close, to be honest. That was like zeroth try. We're just gonna write empty data. This should have just uninitialized shit because we pad out. That's correct. Don't I pad in my network card? If it's less than 64 bytes, then just set it to 64 bytes. Wait, why am I not getting 64 bytes? I think that's just because I haven't sent anything yet. Let's try this. I want to send it with uninitialized stuff in that buffer. I think the second packet will come in bad here. What? What? Where's the data? Where's my ASDF? The length is correct. The length is correct. What? 
Where's my data gone? Oh, do I not copy in the data anymore? Do 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 do. No, that shouldn't be the case. They'll get copied in right away. Where's my ASDF? Hmm. 14, 20, 24, set the length, 14, 20, 24, TCP payload. Why compiler warnings? Because I'm, I'm not worried about fixing these things until we're writing code. Where are those bytes? And how is that not setting the length to this? Maybe it is. Maybe we're just not seeing them. Buff plus len. It's greater than that. Copy that in. The bytes have magically disappeared. I wonder if I only do it once if I still have that problem. Maybe Rust is optimizing out those writes. Shouldn't be able to across that boundary. Wait, now I'm getting ASDF and a subsequent packet. How am I getting two packets? How am I getting two packets? Um, what? I'm just going to halt. How am I getting two packets? Oh, hmm. Wait, no, I don't know. Oh, that's outbound. I'm an idiot. Wait, right? Yeah, that's sending the ack. Yeah, that's sending the ack. Oof. Ah, so that means this is four byte, uh, four packets up, and then it's there. Yeah, so here's the ASDF. Yep, 552. Okay, it was working. It was working this whole time. Okay. Um, I actually feel like eventually this will stop working. I think when I use up enough packets in the NIC, this will eventually start reusing ones that have ASDF in them. And then I think the checksum will be wrong by the NIC. Incorrect. Let's just grep for that. Hey, we have some incorrects. Okay, that makes sense. So, um... I think I want the nick to pad it out. If I didn't have the nick pad it out. Mm, I guess I will just zero out the rest of the packet. So we'll do packet dot raw, packet dot len, packet dot len uh, to 64. Iter mute for each. X is zero, and this is uh, zero out padding bytes. And then this is set the length to 64 bytes. Yep, let PL is packet len. So if the packet length is less than 64, then PL, we will pad it. No more incorrects. So it seems we have fixed it. Good. 
Because if I padded these out with a consistent, like, OX41, this would just always fail. We would have, like, a bunch of errors. Yeah, a bunch of incorrects. Sweet. So we pad this with zeros, which means those don't matter. Now, do I want to pad to divisible by 2? So we're going to see what that looks like. So we're going to try and send a packet that is not evenly divisible by 2. Um, SDF TCP. So this is not evenly divisible by 2. This will be padded with 1, 0. And it looks like that's fine. And then if we go one byte over, now I won't have padding. So it won't be evenly padded. And it looks like that's working, or the packets are getting dropped. And I don't think packets are getting dropped. Oh. Hmm. Um, we have no incorrects. Okay, are we getting, are we getting any of the packets that have, that aren't perfectly divisible by two? Um, ASDF and then an A, an extra A there. Then why am I not getting anything else? Am I sending them too fast for TCP dump? I don't think so. I don't know, maybe TCP dump is dropping them. Possible. Let's go back to this. Oh, I think this died. Come on. Come on, T-Speed. Time out. Retry. I guess Pixie in this case. TFTP. What is that? Retry. That's a long retry period. Yeah, it seems borked. Um, fucking pixie, man. I've tried to use other TFTP servers. Everything sucks. All the TFTP stuff is like really bad, and I have no idea why. I have no idea why, but they are all so bad. The built-in ones are a pain in the ass to configure and set up. The non-built-in ones typically are like really hacky and have leaks. TFTP has a leak. This one clearly has a leak. How do you fuck up such a trivial protocol? I think it's because, like, no one actually puts attention to detail in those because they're just, like, not important. Oh, we're not sending a lot of these. Oh, I'm being dumb. Okay. <laughs> Literally trivial. <laughs> Um, okay, let's grab, oh, fuck, god damn it, that is not what I want to have in my history, all right, need TFTP over HTTPS, nah, it's fine, it's fine, HTTPS is way too complex, <laughs> Fucking hate HTTP.
It worked for DNS. I mean, it didn't work for DNS. They just did it. They didn't necessarily do it because it was the right thing. They just did it because they, because they just did it. <laughs> it's like why all the other standards and stuff exist. It's just like someone just did it at some point. It's brutal, man. I think it's pretty pathetic that like literally our our the, basically the entirety of the world's fucking networking traffic is parsing fucking strings, human readable strings. Like really? Really HTTP? <laughs> I it's it's weird, man. Okay, we pat out and then Uh, grab incorrect. It's perfect. No bugs. So now, actually quick as binary. Yeah, that's true. But it's not too rolled out yet. Boop. Have you checked out Pixie Core? I have not. Interesting. You can kind of manage everything. I might try that. Okay, so we're good. We have packets coming in. No problem. All right, we now have the ability to send and receive TCP packets. And we're not offloading IP, but technically we could be offloading IP. But we're not gonna be bottlenecking on, on uh, perf, I can, I can guarantee you that. Um, all right, so now we have to implement TCP. And TCP is just a protocol where you have some bits that go over, and then sometimes you send an ACK packet when you feel like it, and then it's reliable or something. Uh, so we might have to figure out a little bit more about TCP than just that. All right, let's take a look here. Uh, const TCP fin. So a fin refers to when you have a uh, shark fin on your um, data. A sin is when your data has been naughty. Um, what else do we need? Uh, rest is when the data is really tired and it wants to take a break. What else do we have here? Um, we have an ack, which is kind of like when your your packet kind of gets sick and it's like ah, ah you know. Um, what else do we have? I think that's pretty much all we care about. Fin, sin, reset, and ack. Uh, we'll get push too. Um, const TCP push. Uh, push is actually when your uh, TCP is pushing through the firewall. So if you don't have the push bit set, it can't push through the firewall and get the uh, Trojan horse into your computer. So that's actually, a lot of people call that the virus bit of TCP. <laughs> that's not what any of these things actually mean. TCP uh, push flag, or, uh, uh, final flag, I think fin, right? Final, is that what it is? Final? Yeah, indicates last packet from sender. Uh, TCP sin flag indicates um, uh, a request to sync Renai's sequence numbers. Uh, TCP sin flag, uh, this is reset a TCP connection, uh, TCP push flag, and this is, oops, this is the reset. 
uh, push flag. This is going to indicate the uh, buffered data should be flushed to the application. Indicates. And this is uh, TCP acknowledge. Um, marks that the acknowledge field of the TCP packet is valid. <laughs> People sleep on the push. <laughs> All right, so now we just need to do a connection. And connections are really easy. We just scroll down here and we look for the three-way handshake and it's this. So we send a sin and I pick, I get to pick, cause I'm the connector. I get to pick the uh, sequence numbers we get to use or segment numbers, I think is what they call them, right? Something like that. So we're gonna say, um, ac, this is the current acknowledge, and this is the uh, current sequence. And I think we're gonna need both of these. We're gonna need a client side sequence and a server side sequence. ac is CPU RDTSC um, uh, sequence, ac is zero. There's my random number. Now, now you can't uh, do sequence prediction, so I'm immune to all viruses. Window number, is that what it's called? Sequence number, yeah, they call it sequence number. I think that's the terminology. Oh, window number, like at like for me to have a window number? Yeah, we'll we'll probably we'll probably want one of those. Um, um I don't know where I want to put that yet. I think I'm gonna use a ring buffer. I think that's ideal. So Um, and then I remember like a lot of things really don't like zero windows sometimes. That's like something I see all the time, but zero windows should be fine. Okay. So we're going to send, we're going to send, so this is going to be in connect. We are going to send a TCP packet and then we'll set the, I guess this will take flags. So we'll say TCP sin. This will have flags. This is gonna be a solid TCP implementation. I can tell you that for sure. Um, we've got the flags here, flags, this is TCP, oh, that's on connection, wait, packets, TCP builder, ah, flags, uh, TCP flags to use for the packets, and we got to pass in kind of all the stuff to this, I think. So we'll pass in you know flags here. Okay, so this now is perfect and it doesn't have bugs and that this should just be a completely valid TCP implementation. Um, flags, none. Oh, shit. Create TCP. 
send a TCP sin, and we'll be like, I think we send no payload with a sin. Ah, it's a sin. So we got a sin flag set. Um, and then I'm giving, I need to provide the sequence number. So we'll do, um, yeah, what else do we need in the header? We want sequence and acknowledge. So this is to create like raw TCP packets, basically. Uh, con.seq, con.ac. Uh, we don't need ac in this case. And... What else do we need? Window. And the window is going to be... Here, we'll do this. Um, vec DQ. Uh, I think we have to lock this. Yeah, I think we got to lock this. So basically, we register this in the TCP connections. VecDQ of packets. Hmm. And then when we have packets, we're going to slam them into here. Um, yeah, I need to figure out, like, where I want to put these packets, where I want to put the window. TCP connection. So, yeah, what will the window be? So we can just say, for now, the window is not zero. And then this will take a uh, sequence, an ACK, and a window. And then we just got to slam all the stuff in here. Sequence, an ACK, and a window. Um, sequence, ACK window uh, window size this is the acknowledge field this is the sequence number field then these will get self dot sequence self dot ack self dot window so at this point I think that is all the things that will ever actually pass in. Okay, so we've got a sin, and then we get a reset back. Um, the reset basically indicates, go fuck yourself. Uh, I'm not listening here. No connection. So we're going to need to make a parser for the opposite side of this. Um, and my music stopped. Let's get music going. Put this on. There we go. You use DJB's protocol, which builds on top of UDP, signs each packet with ECC. Oh, that's pretty fancy. Um, okay. Checksum. I think we're good. I think I now need to start parsing packets. Well, I need to figure out how I want to do my windowing. Uh, that's going to be tough. That's going to be really tough. I think maybe this could have a arc lock cell of the window. 
and then we lock it every time we need to get access to the window, and then, yeah, I think that's what we have to do. This is going to be an arc, lock cell, vec, DQ, right? Uh, lock interrupts. And this is the uh, TCP receive window. Okay. Um, use lock cell, lock cell. Use crates, core rex, lock interrupts. Now the fun part of TCP begins. Yeah, I always forget when you have to like retransmit things, but I think it's actually pretty easy, right? Connection.sequence. Ack is zero in this case. Con. Sequence. Ack. What's going on? Does exist. Connection, TCP connection, sequence, snow sequence on a TCP connection, unknown field. Oh, we got one of these bad boys. Um, oh, one of these bad boys on the end. There we go. Done. Fixed. 51. Okay, window is equal to a lock cell new uh, arc new lock cell new of a vec dq with capacity window size. That's a that's a nice one right there. Um, window, window, window size, window size, U32, uh, U16, 65535, uh, maximum number of bytes to use for TCP windowing windows. Yeah. 57 as U size. Now, for this window, we'll actually send, um, here, get access to the TCP window. Well, we need to do this every single time. So, let window is equal to connection.window.lock. This is window capacity minus window len is the size of our window. So this is uh, lock the TCP window, or get access to the, get access to the TCP window uh, for this connection. And then we report that our window is the capacity minus the length. Um, isn't it lock interrupts? Oh, core locals, not core rex. Uh, 74. This as U16. So basically, we will report we have this much room in our window. Easy. And yeah, there's our window, 65535. And then if we change this, and we said we want a window of 8,192 bytes, we should see that reflected. Um, is there a minimum window size? Is there a minimum window size? Capacity minus that. What? 
What? Am I crazy? Window. This is the window right here. That's... Uh, no, that's not the window, is it? Window size the same as TCP MSS. Um, MSS, I think, is used to set the size of the window, the multiplier. Oh, maximum segment size. Um... Oh, that's the MTU, isn't it? Maybe I do need to set that. You kind of, you. I think you tell it what you can communicate with, or like the size of what you can communicate with. But I don't know why that window is not what I gave it. Like this should be 32K. I, I don't know why. And now it's, What? Do I have the do I have to set the MSS on every packet or just on the connection? Why is that saying sixty five three five? Wait, is that what's actually set? What? It's part of the handshake? Okay. Then consistent. Perfect. Uh, window. Get access to the window. Lock it. Create one of these bad boys. Window size. That's the window size, is it not? That's not what I send. Right? Let's see if that comes through. What? Eight one nine two. Eight one nine two. Okay, something's fucked here. Self dot window. Window comes from. I create a vec dq with a capacity. Oh, is vec dq not necessarily making a vector with that capacity? What? Um, vec dq capacity is con dot or window dot capacity what what Is that just a hint? At least that. Okay, that's fine. Then we'll just do this then. Then we won't say the capacity. But now I need these window size, which kind of sucks. Um, Actually, can I do...
Minimum capacity. All right, whatever. Uh, window size. Oops. Oh, so now we're gonna have a lot of these. I don't know, I'll just set window size to U size. No, that's gonna be gross. Okay, so we just send this shit. All right, we got a packet, we got a sin. We've got the window size is exactly what we tell it to be. So we'll say six five five three five. Nice. Okay, so now that we do that, um, now we just need to do the handshake. Um, I mean, technically I don't need to do the MSS, but I should. Set small enough to avoid IP fragmentation, blah, 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 of course. When the TCP connection is established, which gives it's derived from the MTU, for the more TCP senders can use path MTU discovery. It's not negotiated because the, yeah. Okay. I don't think we care yet. We can always add that. All right, now we need to write a parser for TCP packets. Should be pretty easy. We already have an IP parser. So we'll get an IP header. Um, this is on packets. So we're gonna do uh, parse a TCP packet, pub fn TCP. It's gonna look the same as IP takes a self, returns an option, TCP, and then struct TCP has whatever fields we care about, which is basically everything. Source, ports, dest port, um, ack, sequence, ack, Window, flags, urgent checksum we don't care about. Just those for now. And then payload. Doesn't IP have a payload? Yeah, it does. Okay. And then we're going to A ref this, and then we'll reference the IP that this came from. This is the uh, IP header for the packets. This is the uh, TCP, oops, TCP packet payload. This is a parsed TCP packets. It's all, it's got all the goodies. Eventually we'll care about options, but not right now. 108. Uh, then here, IP is equal to self.ip. Then, if IP.payload.len is less than 20, return none. Make sure the minimal size for an IP payload, uh, for a TCP payload is present. TCP header, we'll say. Then, we'll just parse all these things out. Hey, some dude, how you doing? Um, TCP. 
sum. Then we'll do IP payload zero to two. And this is source ports U16 from Ellie Bytes. This try into OK. Best port. Seek ACK. Big Indian. Four to eight. Eight to hex C. Okay, then we have at OXC to OXE and OXE to OX10. This is the, oh, these might actually fit one liners. Window flags. Yeah. There we go. Oh, that looks clean. Oh, is there no payload? It's called raw. No, it's called payload. Son of a bitch. I'll put a little question mark on that. Trying to. Doing good auditing code, online school, taking up my day, my day. And then IP, we can move out now. Missing payload. Let's get the flags. Then we will um, let data offset is equal to flags shift by, eh, looks like 12 times four. Compute the data offset. Uh, compute the size of the TCP header in bytes. One liner. Oh, get the TCP flags. And flags is equal to flags. Compute the size of the TCP header in bytes. Assert uh, here we'll say if data offset is less than 20, return none. We'll say bad TCP offset or bad TCP header size. Right? And then we can compute the payload from IP dot payload dot dot uh, data offset as U size. Um, pull an IP here. We might have a lifetime issue here. Uh, private type, 92, pub. Make all these pub too. If I had the option, I wouldn't use TCP. TCP is actually pretty clean. I don't have many complaints about TCP. I think it's pretty good. You can't really get much simpler than TCP. There's like a couple things you can shave off a of TCP, but it's pretty thin. Con device receive timeout. Tim out. Receive timeout. 100k millis or 100 100 millis um do I got to do that 
internet device. How do I read a raw packet? Receive. Oh, is receive timeout a UDP construct? It is, I guess that makes sense. If not clean, you can't use a cryptographic key in the initial handshake. I mean, it wasn't designed for crypto. Crypto is an afterthought. I don't like the complexity of crypto. I think crypto makes it not clean. But I guess you could have enough room for a cryptographic key. Um, receive. So I guess... I'll do a receive timeout. Receive UDP. Why isn't this just a... Uh, why isn't this just on receive? Um, I feel like receive timeout I should implement on receive and then these could leverage that. I don't know. I'm not sure yet. Let's just bang this in here quick. If let sum packet is equal to receive on the device, I think it's just that. Just device. Time, 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 time. Use create. Time. Which means the actual server uh, indication is offloaded in TLS. You need some reverse proxy bullshit to demux what could have been independent streams from the start. Yeah, that's fair. I'm just not a big fan of like T TLS and SSL in general. I'm more about just, I don't know. I just like the good old fashioned VLAN or like IPsec tunnel. That being said, if you want to connect to random websites, you do need something. So, I mean, you could do like IPsec. I don't know. I, I don't like the concept of like not being able to communicate without having crypto. I think like. I don't like this force of crypto on everything because there's really no good way of doing crypto yet in like any fucking environment. It's really annoying. You can use like OpenSSL, which is fucking ass. And way too big. Like, just the complexity of the crypto algorithms that you need to do basic fucking communications with a server uh, are kind of prohibitively complex and I really don't like it. Unwrap on a nun. You send. Oh, yeah, 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 that's gonna fail, isn't it? In main, 98. Unwrap on that, fails. Oh, yeah, because I returned none here. Okay, if we didn't time out, I should be able to print the. I think I can do this. I think I implemented debug on all these. Packet dot TCP. Well, 
Where a guide a guard is 1,000 lines of code, safe as SSL, and only requires unspecified out-of-band setup for public key exchange. Interesting. Order of magnitude 1K lines? Yeah. I feel like 1K lines is way too small to do any sort of crypto. Um, TCP. Okay, we got debug, so we should get a packet back. None. Ooh. Wait, how long is it taking for it to respond? Now it responds right away. Um, hmm. Print maybe TCP. I'm printing. Gotta do this. Let TCP is this. Print TCP. Maybe TCP. Okay, that means I'm probably doing something wrong with the parsing. Uh, offset E is 12. No. Let's see. Well, E is... Yeah, E to 10 is correct. Band header size. Are we fine here? Print woo. Okay, so for some reason that size is fucked. Flags. Is it not 12? Shift 12? No, it's shift 12. Oh, that's the protocol. Oh no, that is the that isn't. Um yeah, shift twelve multiplied by four. And we'll just print this size here. IP payload E to ten. I guess I don't know it's TCP. If that, or, where's that UDP? Or the protocol is not equal to IP proto TCP. Just in case we're not getting a TCP packet, but I think we are. Okay, we are, and then we're pushing that wrong. Flags. Shift 12. Mm, I'm going to press X to doubt there. Yeah, there are flags set. Am I hitting the wrong thing? C to E for flags. Oh, I'm going the wrong way. Oh, whoopsies. Whoopsies. See? This is E to 10. Source, dest, sequence, ack, then the flags, then these. All right, so we have... A TCP packet, source port 2000, desk port is 62068, sequence is zero, ACK is this, window is zero, length is zero, payload, because this length is zero, and the flags are these. All right. Nice. Nice. So we're getting that response, so now we just have to respond. I'm going to hit the head. I'll be right back.
Not necessarily, 1K is fine. Yeah, I guess I've never implemented a like SSL stack. Maybe it's not as bad as I think. Like I used to think uh, TCP was way too complex of a protocol, but it's actually really simple. So, I don't know. Maybe it's not as bad as I think. But I often don't like, I don't know. The SSL libraries are so fucking huge and so fucking unwieldy. I think the biggest problem is you need to negotiate your crypto scheme. And you have like a billion different crypto schemes. So you don't need just one encryption scheme. You need every single encryption scheme the server could ever respond to saying, this is what we're using today. Or the client, whatever you negotiate. All right. So now we can parse TCP packets. Fucking easy, guys. Fucking easy. Is there any unsafe code in this? No unsafe code in our TCP stack. Fuck yeah. Um, okay. That is validated to TCP. The lengths have been validated to be good. We have the payload, which is the raw payload. So all we really care about are these numbers now. So that server acts this. So I think what I'll do is I will put, I think I'm gonna want a remote, I'm gonna want a remote ACK so I can track what has been ACKed. But that's what I sent it. Oh, it adds one. So here's one thing I never got about ACKs. You increment it by the number of bytes in the payload, but do you always add one to it so it's per packet or is it just a special case on the SYN, on the SYN ACK? Um, the corresponding ACK are then this sequence number plus one. Okay. So it's just on the SYN. Okay. So we do a SYN. And I feel like I might want to find a cleaner way to do this. And I don't know if I want retries. I don't know. I don't think I want retries. And this is connect timeout. Right? Const U64. Number of microseconds to wait. Um, before timing out on a sin ack response. Sin finner conceptually a single byte on the data stream? Okay. Acking a sin, the sequence number after the ISS? Okay. Um... And then I acknowledge their act, right? Is that it? I think I send an act once I get theirs. And I act because they are letting me know their sequence number. No. Are they? Um, set to one more than the received one. And the sequence number that that server chooses for the packet is another random number B. Why the fuck is it sending me zero? Um, 
Oh, is that not the real sequence number? No, I think that is. Does Linux use zero for sequence number? All right. So TCP connection, we'll move this up. Look up what happens when you have SynFin in the same packet. <laughs> that seems fancy. That seems fancy. Okay. Um. This is the R current sequence and R current acknowledge. Um, and then we have the server sequence, and this is the last observed sequence number from the server, and then server ack, and this is the uh, last observed seek, uh, acknowledge number from the server. I guess I shouldn't say server here. Should I like, say like remote? From the remote side. Okay. 93. Remote sequence is zero. Remote act is zero. All right, we're almost doing TCP. We're like probably an hour away. Um, we will say break if if the TCP flags and TCP sin. or TCP ACK is equal to TCP SYN or TCP ACK break, right? Oh, and TCP dot um, ACK is equal to Connection dot sequence wrapping add one. I think I'm gonna do this. When we send it, it's con dot seek wrapping add one. Um, update the sequence number by one since we sent a sin. Correct? I'm um, here. If we got a synac that also came from and has the act that matches our sequence, then we're really happy. And we can do connection dot um, remote sin uh, remote sequence is equal to tcp dot sequence and remote ack is that. So we established the remote side of those things. Oh yeah, and um, if let sum sum, if let sum packet is this dot and then x dot tcp, another pretty boy. So parse it as a TCP packet, and then I uh, will just say, yeah, TCP. Can't assign, make this mute. One twenty 
Oh. You're right. You're right. You're right, Rust. Um... If let some TCP... Is there a better way to do this in Rust? Can I do like and as ref and then maybe? I don't know. In this case, it's not too bad, so I'm not too worried about it. Okay. And then this will be like print got synac. Right? Oh, we got a reset, didn't we? Oh, yeah. We'll say if TCP flags and TCP reset is not zero, return none, um, active connection rejection, right? Is it a reset that it sends? I don't know what the dot is. Yeah, when it rejects that, does it just send a, a reset? I think so. You should only adhere if the sequence number matches. Okay. Right. If it's a reset and... I will do this. If TCB ACK is not equal to connection.sequence, continue. Oh, I got a port filter at this stage. I'm not filtering ports at all because I'm doing raw receives. Um, if the act is not equal to that, or or the port. Um, the desk port is not equal to connection dot port. I think I call it port. I do. So if it's not responding to what we expect or it's not that, then we have an active rejection. Okay. If TCP, if it acts not our sequence, or the destination port is not equal to the connection port, okay. Now, and cat listen harder. Two thousand, because I think this resets. So we got a synac. Now it's sending me some options. It's like, yo, dude. Yo, I want to use some options. What's up? I got an MSS here I really want to use, 1460. And I'll be like, yo, I can figure that out. <laughs> um... I'm guessing the dot means ack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a reset ack. TCP ack or reset. If that is equal to a TCP ack or TCP reset.
Um, so if we got an ACK reset, I guess here we'll just say if TCP flags, oops, TCOP, TCP flags and TCP reset is not equal to zero, uh, TCP ACK, uh, if it's zero, all packets should be ACKs at this point. This is, make sure the port and sequence are sane. Uh, we want to filter the port first. If this is not equal to that, uh, packet wasn't for us, in which case we actually have to put it back on a queue. In this case, all packets should be ax. Then we can say, make sure the sequence is what we expect. If it's not equal to that, then continue. Otherwise, now we can check if it's a reset. If it's a reset, then it's that. If it is a flags and TCP sin um, is not zero, then we're good. Else continue. Uh, unexpected packets. Okay, make sure this is a, a sin response. It's looking pretty clean. And I think that should work. Got Synac. Okay. So I sent a sin. I got a Synac. Then. What? I send a sin. I got a sin hack. What is this? What is this? This is an act, but I didn't. But. I don't send an act, do I? Oh, I do send an act. Holy shit, I already wrote that fucking code. <laughs> it's not right, but I already wrote it. We're gonna act the remote act, uh, remote sequence, right? Um. So we'll allocate a packet, we'll send a TCP ACK as the only flags, we'll send our sequence number, which will have the plus one accounted for because we added the one here. Then we're going to have remote sequence. The remote sequence number is our ACK because we're going to acknowledge theirs and we're going to add one to it, I guess. Um, yeah, I want to add one to that. And I think I just want to update my state. Wrapping add one. Right, I, I think I want to add it there. I'm trying to think if that's going to bite me. I don't think so. We have no retries on this, but I don't really care. Um, send the window size. That's beautiful. Love it. All right. What we got? Um, we're getting a reset. Sin. Ack. Wait, I'm getting a reset? Oh, Netcat's only listening once. I think so. Sin. Sin ack. Ack. So we send an ack. And what's F. What flag is F? Fin? Why does it send me a fin? Is it because I didn't give it... That's a fin act. Seek one, act one. 
Sequel in Act 1. It's a Finac? What the fuck's a Finac? Is that the end? An act of close? Why is it closing that connection? It's closing it because I haven't agreed to its MSS, correct? It doesn't like that I didn't respond to its MSS? Is that what it's complaining about? Sin Sinac. Unless I calculate these things incorrectly, but I don't think so. So I set this wrapping add. I send it my ACK as the remote sequence. And I send that packet off. It should be fine. So I would suspect that's just options then. It's not happy with me. Sin. Oh, are these fins for different ports? Oh, they're fins for different ports. They're random shit I had open. Yeah. It's trying to close other sessions. Okay, yeah, we're fine. Okay, we technically want to parse out those options at this point. But let's just send a packet. Create TCP. Oh, there we go. So we're going to send a real packet now. And we'll send a push. I think I need an ACK here. I mean, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to ACK all the packets. I don't think it fucking matters. And then I'm going to send... Moose Waffles. I need to respect the server's MSS, right? When I send it packets, I need to respect its MSS. Holy shit, is that gonna build? Did that build? Okay. Moose waffles. Did a push act. And then it act. Okay. Uh, let's put some CRLFs in there. Fuck. Um, EOL. Need to respect it. No one choose it. Yeah. Oh, do I need to do... Fin no, fin is you close it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, push. Do I not send a push act? Is that not what I do? Oh, I don't want to... Ooh. Whoops. That would make sense. Here we go. Here we go. Moose waffles. We did it. We sent TCP. We just made a reliable message. We have done it. We have sent a message. And then I update my sequence, right? Um, connection, after I send that shit, I update my sequence to reflect what I sent. And that's just a byte to the payload. So yeah, hell yeah. All right, so this is gonna be on TCP Builder. Nope, we're implin. Oh, we haven't impled anything yet on TCP connection. On TCP connection, we're gonna implement a FN send. This is gonna take a middle reference to self. It's gonna take a reference to 
a, pay, a, a buffer, and it's gonna send this whole fucking thing. And then it'll push the last packet. So right now it's 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 really fucked, right? Because if I do buff and I send it a lot of stuff, it's fucked. But then we can do um, connection dot sequence is equal to connection dot sequence wrapping add buff dot len. Uh, as use 32. I guess technically that's not how it's going to work. It's going to be like for chunk in remote remote MSS uh, remote uh, MSS sent by the server. I, what's the default MSS? Does anyone know? I'm guessing there has to be a default MSS. For chunk and buff dots. You have four numbers. The seek you sent, the seek the remote is act, seek. Yeah, the, these four, yeah. Can get away with three. Yeah, yeah. I like four. Four is easier because you don't like have double meaning on things. Um, what's the default MSS? Oh, and does the MSS, is that talking about the TCP header plus the contents of the packet or just the payload? Well, I guess it wouldn't know how many options you send it. What's the largest option field that you can send? It's four, uh, 16 times 4. 64 bytes is the max header size, right? And it sent me, what, 1460? Only the payload size? Really? What did it send me as MSS? Uh, 1460? But that couldn't fit. Oh, the maximum header is, is not... It's uh, 15 times 4, 60 bytes, plus 14 bytes for an IP header, so 74. What? What? So that is... How would it receive packets that large? 15 times 4 plus that. That's 1520 already. Right? If it's only the payload, is the payload the IP payload or the TCP payload? Because if it's the TCP payload, this wouldn't fit. Right? MSS is MTU minus the IP header plus options minus the TCP header. Okay, so it is just the raw payload. So how the fuck would this receive that packet? Because if I sent it with full options, it wouldn't fit. Right? <laughs> right? Anyways. Yeah, it could be 60 bytes, right? So if I take 1460 plus 60, that's 1520. Okay. That's not what MSS requires. Okay, perfect. Cool. Remote... Um, remote, what the fuck is this? Window. This is the uh, last observed remote uh, window size from the remote side. You mustn't exceed in any circumstances. Okay. All right, window. 
So every time that we get an ack from... Every time we get an ack, we want to set all of these. Right? Um, remote window, technically U16. And then 119, remote window, remote MSS is, uh, you said default is 536. Like, I want to fail closed. I want to fail as simple as possible. Okay, for each chunk in the buffer dot chunks of, um, Oh, Desu, is there a good way to know when an iterator is at the end? I really want, like, an iterator that returns a boolean, which tells you whether it's on the last one or not, so I know whether or not I can flush, but it doesn't matter too much. Self.remote MSS as usize. And then we'll validate that. We'll, we'll just, like, cap that to something. We'll do, like, let MSS is equal to... Peak is none. But could I use that inside the loop? We're going to do core, uh, compare, min. Okay, I'm going to try it. So I, I have to, well, no. Yeah, because you have a reference to the iterator when you're inside the iterator. Unless everything implements copy, in this case it won't. have to do manual iteration while while next or whatever ha <sighs> if let yeah while let some okay isn't that still going to borrow isn't x still borrowing iterator Depends on the iterator, yeah. Yeah, so I'll probably just compute the chunk size, but this is something that I do a lot, and I'd really like to not have that. So we'll do self.remote MSS as U size, and then we'll just set our MSS internally to a maximum of 1560, right? This is like cap the MSS to a reasonable size. And then here we'll do MSS. X cannot borrow the iterator due to the definition of it, the iterator trait. Okay. So if I do iterator is equal to buff.chunks MSS, then I can do while let sum chunk is equal to iter.next. This has to be mute. And then I can say here if iter.peak is none tcp push else zero because a method yeah you're totally right you see what i'm trying to do though um and we need to honor the window and there's like a bunch of shit uh oh there's no peak on chunks What? It implements iterator. Isn't it iterator where peak comes from? Where's peak? Peak is peakable iterator. Oh, there's no. It's not a peakable iterator. It's a exact size iterator. Can I do the len dot zero on that? Dot peakable? What do you what do you think is better? The lend zero? Yeah, okay. If the len is zero, len zero is better, I agree. And then I still have to do this, right? 
Yeah, I still have to do the while let, I think. Or can I for it earth this? No, because that's borrowing it in the for loop, isn't it? It, I don't think it's smart enough to know that that's the last iteration of the loop. 68. I think 4 takes iter. Okay. Um, we'll just return sum. And we just have some issues. Con. These are... Ever that con... Con dot becomes self what I don't know why I missed this maybe I just didn't have it selected okay uh, 81 server not found in the scope yes we need to put that server in this um, server this is the like net address address of the remote server 131 and then server the problem is I I kind of have like a loop here where that wants to use device mm. Yeah, I gotta do this I think if server is none Oh, that's gross man that's a lot of code duplication. Hmm. I mean, it's not that bad, I guess. Uh. server we move that in so this is connection 145 found an option yeah so if that is none then here let server is server unwrap um self server and this is just device cur because I moved that in I think I put a ref on it yeah okay um okay got synac okay and then we don't send anything which is fine and then here get rid of that and then that will return a connection at this point and on the connection, I'm going to clean this up a little bit, a little bit here. Thank you so much, FluxGB with the Twitch Prime. Fuck yeah. Don't forget about MSS for jumbo frames as well. As the fact is I triple E 802.3ac can extend the max ETH frame. Oh, there's not going to be any Wi-Fi here. Um, I see, but they expand it to include the VLAN. Huh. Yeah, I'm not doing jumbos right now at all. I'm not doing jumbos, and I'm not doing Wi-Fi ever. <laughs> and I'm not going to have VLAN support either. <laughs> Um, okay, Synac, and then I think I just send this. I'm going to send waffles. <laughs> Private function? Not anymore. So this will allow me to send some waffles over the network. Routers and switches may need to send the different frame size, all right? Huh. Okay, there's waffles. 
Look at that. That's some fancy shit. And I should push on the last one. So if it's the end of the iterator, then we'll push the iterator. Or we'll, pu we'll send a push instead of... Yeah, if we look... We, the last packet that we send, if I fucking start TCP dump, I just need to do no password all on this box. I don't care. Um, yeah, I push it. Nice. So I set the push flag. So technically, what I need to do um, is I don't want to exceed the window in terms of what I'm sending. So now I have to do this hard stuff. Um, send a TCP, uh, send a payload over the TCP connection. So I think we just send shit, but then eventually I have to start acking. And I have to act when I exceed the window size. So this is like, let mute, um, max. So I know their ack, I know my current, Right? So I have to compute the distance between myself and the server. And that is done by, basically, that's done by doing self.remoteAC minus self.sequence. So this is like, um, unact, right? And this is wrapping sub. So I take the remote ACK. No, I want to take my sequence. My sequence minus the remote ACK. Right? So the sequence subtracting the most recent thing that we've seen from the server is an ACK. And this is unact, unact. And then I update, update our sequence. And I want to make sure that unact never exceeds the window size. So in that case, unact is zero. And so I want to send two messages. And if I just send these really fast, waffles and cakes, there's going to be a pattern here, I can guarantee you. The image is safe for work. Woo! Oh, I don't know if that is safe for work. That's uh, that's a dangerous um, that's a dangerous book. But fucking congrats, man. Covers Rust 2018. Hell yeah, dude, that looks sick. I've got uh, I've got server racks coming in tomorrow. Um, I actually have never racked my servers. My servers are just literally stacked. I've got like a bunch of four U stacked on top of each other. So I'm gonna rack my servers for the first time ever. Maybe I'll stream that. Organize. I want to label, I want to have like one wall of my server room. I want to just be containers where everything's labeled. And I just want it to be like, I want it to be completely separated to the point that it says like cat six, five foot cables. And that way, if I open that, there's no 10 foot or eight foot or six foot cables in there. It's only five foot. So I want to have like a fuck ton of drawers. So like all my USB cables, VGA cables, DVI, I want all of them separate because I like. I'm getting to the point now that I keep buying shit that I already own, and I am like, dude, I'm, cr I, I, I am probably, I probably have like 500 bucks in inventory of like fucking USB, VGA, miscellaneous cables. I'll never complain about cat cables, because I'll always fucking use those for whatever, but like, <laughs> I keep ordering like USB 3 extension cables, and then I keep finding that I have like a box full of 20 of them. <laughs> um, can need some Kleenex for tomorrow's stream. I'm not tomorrow is not the new server. The server hasn't shipped yet. It still hasn't been manu made yet. Um, and quite frankly, it's it's potentially gonna be a while before that server is. Uh, I think they said it will likely ship on the fifteenth. So. What gear do you have? I've got two, um, two like big servers right now. They are, um, I have a Xeon Phi server, 
So 64, 256 threads um, with 96 gigs of RAM. And then I have a AMD machine, an ancient AMD machine. We're not talking Ryzen. I've got a pile driver machine with quad sockets. There's 16 core AMD 6376s. So it's 64 cores total. Um, and that one has uh, 512 gigs of RAM. What else do I got? I have a... Um, I have a file server with 32 tera in RAID 10, so only um, only 16 tera is accessible. Those are platters. Uh, I want to actually convert that to NVMe probably this year, but that's like 15 grand in NVMe. Also, you can make your own cat cables with a crimping tool. I do have cable, and I, I do crimp my own cables. Um, but... Uh, why not ZFS? I, I, I actually used to run ZFS, but I just switched over to Linux because it was just fucking easier. But yeah, I ran ZFS on FreeBSD on that server for seven years. So I actually only switched over this year. Um, ZFS on Linux? Haven't tried it. It's great now? Okay, last time I looked, it was like not great. So maybe I should uh, look at that. Um... It's almost prod ready. Yeah, I'm just using X4, which is fun. I've never had a drive failure in my life. Knock on wood. <laughs> so, like, I'm, I'm feeling pretty cozy. I've never had to rebuild anything. I don't, I don't hot swap drives in and out. I don't, like, grow things up. I've never had disk corruption, ever. I've never had a ZFS log that wasn't clean. <laughs> like, I don't know. I... And I'm running, uh, it's eight different four terabyte drives in there, I think. So those are, those are pretty fun. And then I've got, um, what else do I have in there? I've got a couple like CPU research machines, which are just random shit. Um, that's not true. I've had one drive fail failure. I had a 50 gig SSD fail in like 2009. Like one of the first SSDs, actually no. My, I, the 50 gig SSD I have still is running in one of my servers. The first SSD I bought in like 2008, 2009 still works. It's the one that I bought like two years after when they started mass producing them, but they were still like really sketch. So like the first batch was like a research like lab CPU. Not of course it's production because I fucking bought it off Newegg. But it was, like, when they were still uncomfortable with the tech and they were, like, taking precautions. And then they went balls to the wall in the next two years. And those drives were, like, the SSDs between 2009 and 2012 were absolute dog shit. <laughs> um, but, yeah. So, I'm looking to update my storage server and switch everything to NVMe. I think I'm going to do similar. 32 Terra, 16... Terra in RAID 10. I love RAID 10. RAID 10 is just fantastic. Um, I'd rather just fucking pay the money and go RAID 10 than use RAID 5 or RAID 6. RAID 5 and 6 just have terrible performance properties, and it's just, it's not really worth it. I'll just, I'll just buy the drives. I don't care. Like, I don't know. I've had sticks of RAM fail. I've had, like, four sticks of RAM fail, but the 512 gig machine i think has i think it has 64 dims maybe 32 dims because that was before there was like super high capacity ram so it was 512 gigs via like a shit ton of like four gig or like eight gig dims or something so but yeah then i'm getting uh, a new server that i bought that we're gonna be racking on stream uh when that comes which is likely two weeks out like maybe Maybe we get lucky and that ships, but I the CPUs that I bought were out of stock and the chassis I bought I think was out of stock and the RAM that I bought I think like only had partial stock. So like basically to build uh to build it 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 just has to be all like they have to find the stock somehow. But we'll see. We'll see. I'm I'm super excited for those. Those are those are going to be like, I don't know. I bought like a shitty, shitty, like tiny storage thing that I'm going to try and use for my online network. Cause I only have storage on my offline network, but I don't know. 
Anyways, let's see if this, uh, this prints. Nine. Okay, on act nine. That's perfect. That's what I want. And then connection fail in a second. So zero, nine. So that tells me how many things have been on act. And then I can say on act and then the window size minus that, right? Let's remain is equal to self dot sequence dot uh, no, this is self dot self remote window uh, minus unact, and this is uh, compute the number of unacknowledged bytes by the uh, remote end, and this is compute the number of bytes the remote server is capable of accepting from this point. Wrapping sub? This one shouldn't need wrapping sub. Top one definitely does. Um, remote window minus on act. And we're gonna say as u size, as u size, just because these are sizes at this point. But yeah, compute the distance of unact things, and that was correct. It was nine, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine for the CRLF. So then the remaining is the remote window minus the unact, and that's going to tell me how much I can currently send. Is that is that not correct? Right. So then what we can do is buff remain, and we can send only up to that amount. Rust makes this shit so easy, dude, and see this fucking blows. <laughs> You're computing the max MSS size? Are you not having each size announce the MSS during the, I mean, that's what I have, right? That's what I store. Right, the MSS comes from the remote MSS and this. This is like my size. I shorten it, potentially, if they report greater than 1560. Because I know this is what I want to send. I can go under that MSS, but this is what, the, what we negotiated, what it sent to me. And then I cap that at 1560. And then I split up the buffer by that size, and then I just shit out all the packets. Should be that easy, I think. Nothing too crazy there. Didn't see the remote MSS? Yeah. And right now, I'm actually not parsing that out of options, um, but I do set it to the default. <laughs> so this should be valid in all situations, even if I'm ignoring that option field. But yeah. I should be able to ignore that option field and use the default. Otherwise, they are not complying. <laughs> Had an online philosophy lesson. Oh, yeah. What did that pertain? That sounds interesting. Okay. My sequence. Subtract the remote act. Compute the number of bytes, remote window, minus unact. We trim it down to remain. We split it up into MSS chunks. We then make packets, and we write in the chunk, not the buff. We write in the chunk, and then we add the chunk length to our sequence. So go through every chunk in the remaining amount respect to their window. This is uh, iterate through MS, MSS size chunks in the remain of the buffer, right? And then this is allocate a packet, get access to the TCP window, because um, I'm sending it my window size, so I make sure that it gets the latest window size, create TCP, I have the server address. If it's the last packet, I send an, a push 
all of them are acts. I send my sequence. I send my remote. Uh, I ack the remote sequence I've seen most recently. I then set the window size. I report my window size minus the number of cons uh, number of bytes in the window, and then I send that chunk, or I write that chunk to the packet, and then I update the sequence, and then here, uh, send the packet. This is the same logic. We only need to flush on the last one. If iter.len is zero, uh, actually, iter.len is zero, and that will flush the packet, the raw packet. And this is about as optimized, I think, as I can make it. This will buffer all the packets in my NIC until the NIC is full, in which case it'll flush it out, or until it's the last packet, in which case it'll always flush it out. And then I'll have to have a loop here where I wait. Um, I can either report partial status during the send, or I can just loop internal to here where I actually consume the next part based on remain and go through the whole buffer. So, but this, uh, 84, what's going on here? Buff, remain, oh, that's fine. Um, core, uh, remain. This is, uh, core compare min between buff.len and this, right? So the smaller between the two, what the server can handle and what we can handle. Um, and make sure it, it, does not exceed the size of the buffer we want to send. So, super simple there. It's about time that we get rid of some of these warnings, but uh, okay, so that works. And then that's gonna stop. Okay, so next, um, let's try and send a lot more. So let's try and send let mute data is vec ox41. Let's try and send 32 megs plus seven, just so it's like an, a weird fucking number. And then we'll send data. See what happens here. This is only gonna send the first part, I think. And we'll unwrap here. So this isn't gonna send everything. It's only gonna send 32K, because we don't check for that window size update. But we should see them in chunks, and we should see the window sizes updating, and we should, I mean, that's definitely more than um, test.txt. So I'll run this again, and we should be able to hopefully control C this. Uh, LSL test.txt, this should be basically the size of the TCP window, uh, 64240. And I don't know what it reports. Um, yeah, I don't remember what the server reports as its window. But we've got 64240, so we definitely sent multiple packets. And we'll want to send a pattern or something in a minute. But for now, we're just going to try this out. 64240. Yep, so we sent it. We filled up its window, and then we didn't check for new acts, and then we returned out from our function. Perfect. So this is looking pretty fucking good. Shouldn't seek incre increment by one. In before that is divisible by MSS. <laughs> um, I think sequence here, it should just increment by the size of the data that I'm sending. Right? It increments by one when you send a sin, or when you're responding, when you're acting a sin, but I don't think you increment it by one for just a normal packet. I'm no expert, but I would guess that if I wasn't doing that correctly, I would not have gotten this whole data, right? We can try it. I can increment it by one. I don't think that is correct, but we can try it and we can see if we get the data. But I'm guessing Linux would be very unhappy with these sequences. Let's take a look. Yeah, that failed after the first one. Okay, so we are now able to send <laughs> up to window size. Woo! Beautiful. We don't do retransmits. We don't do anything yet, but that's, that's easy. Um, so now what we're going to do is when we have exhausted the window... I guess we're gonna wait for axe for a, a, a schmidge, a small amount of time. 
And then if we don't get an act, then we're going to resume where we left off. He needs to send more than 64k a day. Exactly. Um. So this. Ah, fuck me. I copied the wrong code. Um, I guess this is effectively what I want. Roughly this. <laughs> Not a bug, it's a feature. Yeah, exactly. Just don't send that much data and it's fine. <laughs> okay. Um, compute the TSC value for the timeout. In this case, we're going to hard code a timeout and we'll constify it later. So if we have timed out, we're going to return none. No, we're going to panic right now because we want to handle partial sends. Default MSS on Windows is 1460. TCP window size is 17520. Oh, yeah, because they set the... Um, they're going to have the multiplier on that. 1460 on Linux. And then I see. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to we're then going to wait for a packet. And then if it wasn't destined for a port, if it wasn't an ack, if the sequence didn't match, and then at this point I can say like, "Ooh, acks maybe?" Right. So at this point, we got an ACK for, oh, it's not going to be equal. Um, I actually need to figure out how I want to handle that. Self.sequence. So if the ACK is not equal to our sequence, which is basically waiting for the entire thing, which is technically valid, but we won't retransmit, like, where the server started, but acts maybe. So that's gonna wait for the last thing to get act, which is not necessarily what I wanna do. I probably want to, um, I mean, technically I can jump backwards in time, I think, right? Cause I can just pretend all those packets got dropped and I can just retransmit this whole chunk, right? Where I wait for the last act and I just ignore all of the acts on the way. It's not the most optimal thing, but it is correct, right? And I don't think perf-wise it's going to really have any issues until you have, like, drops, which I don't give a fuck about because this isn't for the internet. This is for LANs. This is a LAN TCP implementation. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is fine. I can just discard everything that isn't the last act. I guess I don't get the ratcheting effect. It means that if, yeah, I probably should implement that. Then. How do I do that then? Two MSS values transmitted and received. Oh, interesting. Default is the minimum 536, yeah. That's what I'm currently sending. I'm sending 536. I can actually saturate. I can saturate at uh, much less than that, to be honest. <laughs> okay. How do I... How do I know if the ACK is valid? Like, should I should I know which, which packets I've sent? Because it shouldn't ACK like halfway through a packet. Or should I just be okay with that? Like, let's say I, let's say we're at zero right now. We're at sequence zero, and I send 512 bytes, and it acts 256. What do I do? Do I just say, fuck it, and just say, like, that's its latest one? And how do I update, how do I know that it's greater than, because it wraps modulo the boundary? I guess I know that the packet size can't exceed the MSS, so I can find what could be the largest. So I think what I want to do is I want to do um, self dot, what is it, remote ack? Remote, um, yeah, remote ack is equal to tcp.ack. 
So this is like update the server ack. But this could cause me to like go back in time. So I want to make sure this only goes forwards, right? Um. Axe can build up. One act can acknowledge. Yeah, that's the like sack stuff, right? And I'm fine with that. So what I need to do... And sacks typically, it's like a timeout of like a few milliseconds before it just sends the act anyways, right? Because it usually batches like N, where N is typically like 2, just to reduce the amount of packets on the network. But I think I want to consume those... Um, shit. Device receive. How do I determine if the ACK has increased? So I can I can just update the remote act here, but that could cause it to go backwards, like theoretically. Maybe I just don't care about that situation. I mean, I kind of do. I could say like the start act. God, what's the best way to handle this? Um. Let's see. Fuck, how do I want to do this? Remote ACK. We check the window. Wrapping sub. Less than a lot. Yeah. Like, less than MSS, right? Or, or less than the size of the packet, maybe? I don't know. A meg or something? Actually, a meg is... Uh, 64K is fine, because nothing can be greater than 64K. So I can say if it's less than 64K, then it incremented, right? So I can do... I guess it could batch multiple 64Ks. Act on... Subsequent segments in either direction. Also define a window size. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm probably actually going to peel these packets off. I haven't written that yet, of course. But I'm probably going to peel these packets off, non-blocking, inside of this loop. So that I can update the window size. And that way I don't, like, send all my shit and then wait. And then send all my shit, then wait. I will just send shit check if there's a packet, and then I will potentially keep the window permanently updated, right? Um, this is work for async? Fuck no. <laughs> we write our own async here. <laughs> Threads are scary. <laughs> state machine. Now I think here, I mean, I, I don't think this is actually too difficult, right? So I can just say, let's ack increase is equal to cell uh, TCP ack wrapping sub remote ack. And then we can say if ack inc is less than, right? You have to make sure you keep all the segments. That's not a big problem. I'm not going to I'm not going to return from send until I've act everything, and that solves that problem. <laughs> I'm just gonna wait till I get the last act, and that way this buffer never gets released. Um. If this is less than, like, what? A meg? 
Is a mega lot? What's the what's the largest fucking size you can have? What's the window largest window size? So window window scaling. Wow, you can go to a gig. Fuck. Is less than the remote window. I'm trying to think if that's always correct. I think so. I think so, right? So if it's less than I-32 max, well, that's not necessarily going to work, right? Oh, I-32 max. Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. Um, I mean, that would allow me to, like... Oh, I need to bounce check it as well against my ACK. Yeah, I guess I... Hmm, right? I can just say... Um, ACK ink is this sub that that's basically the increment in the ACK and I can say um, Oh, yeah, 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 we'll just do this if self remote ACK is greater than the self dot ACK uh, sequence uh, Continue we'll just be like uh, Remote ACK exceeds our sequence right? In which, in which case, we got, we got some problems. So this is like, so this will prevent that, right? Um, oh, that's not always true though, right? Because the fucking wrapping. <laughs> Dude, I hate this. I hate how it's mod 32, man. Um, if this, um, because that can, if I take my sequence, so this is, can be like, here, dist from ack is self dot sequence. Checked uh, wrapping sub remote ack. So this is the this is the distance that we are from the ack. So this is um, what is this number? This is the like um, ack remain. Um. Get the number of bytes left for remote to ack, and then we'll say if ack remain is greater than self dot window side remote window continue. This is like right. That's not never gonna happen. Like cannot have more. Cannot have more remaining bytes than the window. So then here, I can say, do I have to do any more checks? Or can I just say, self.sequence is equal to uh, remote, remote act is equal to TCP act, right? Get the number of bytes left. So our sequence that we sent, subtract off the remote ACK. If that exceeds the remote window, these are all unsigned. If that exceeds the remote window, then what are you doing? <laughs> and in which case, it is inside of that window, and we will just update the remote ACK. And where we set the remote ACK, we also want to set the remote window and the sequence. Why not, right? 
update the server state. Oh, and here we can say, um, I mean, technically, do I want the sequence to be able to go back in time on the server side? Technically, the server sequence shouldn't change here. I guess it can it can be sending me data. So I guess it theoretically could. Right? It could totally send me data. I'm just going to assert that self remote sequence is equal to tcp.sequence. We're just going to assert that that's not changing for now. This is um, currently we don't handle acts that also are sending data. <clears throat> and like that's what a send is going to look like, but we'll need to have actual code to put that into our window and send an act in that situation. It shouldn't be plus one. Okay, explicit panic at 115. All right, we timed out. That's fair, because we didn't give it a, a reason to stop. So, what we're going to do is we're going to slam this into here. And we're going to attempt to pick something off. Uh, and we'll do while let some. While there's a packet, while there's a raw packet, consume the raw packets. It's getting close. Okay. So we don't end up sending more because we stop the loop. But now what we do is um, unact is this. And then I think I'm just looping on the outside. Set text width is 79. Remote MSS, that's not changing. So we don't need to do anything there. But this whole thing goes in a loop while we're sending data. So then I need to track the number of bytes that were sent. Let mute sent is equal to, this is number of transmit bytes. And we will only mark them as sent once this happened. Oops. We'll only do that once we have axe. And once we get axe, then sense plus equals self.remote ack wrapping sub. Self, uh, whoa. That's not sequence. And this this is packet. Yeah. Based on their ACK. So take the current sequence that we have sent, subtract off the TCP ACK. And then at this point, we want to update the number of sent bytes. And we'll do this by adding. Remote ACK. And we're going to subtract off the um, fuck. This is uh, tcp.ack and tcp.remoteAck or self.remoteAck. Update number of bytes sent based on the ack and then print sent this sent. Right? So that's basically the distance between the acks. Can we send more than four gigs? Yeah, because we're going to convert that to U sizes. But we will we'll test that. That'll definitely be something we'll test. Um, wow. Print got ack.
What? Why let self device receive? Um, got TCP. How can we normally use print with an N rather than print line? I don't like having my uh, new lines be different on my target. I like for my new lines to always be the same. It also makes it easier to convert prints to writes when that situation arises. Um, whoa. This is building, right? All right let's clear up some of the shit. It's about time. Packet lease. Atomic. Unreachable. 216. Doesn't need to be mute. 272. Doesn't need to be mute. 101. Doesn't need to be mute. Okay, that's like probably better. TCP. You can make these pub. Uh. Okay, what do we got going on now? 2.15. Oh yeah, just create, create TCP. Yeah, we don't need that binding technically. And then pending coverage we don't use. Unreachable, 149, yep. Let's get rid of that for now. Obviously, that'll eventually be reachable. Okay. Print line always adds new line. Oh, interesting. I still like being able to just convert to a, a write. I don't know. I like the explicitness of the new lines. So what's going on here? I'm never getting a packet. I don't end up returning, I don't think. This is a uh, print remain is this. Oh, I fill up remain and then I never go on the inside loop. Yeah. Right, Ellen? Oh, shit. Okay, maybe I should switch to that. Wow, we blast all those packets up before we get the ack. I'm pretty impressed. We'll just do this for now, where we drain these. Um, if it's an ack and it's destined for us, then update sent. Here we go. Here we go. Now that's sending the same A's over and over again. So, what I want to do is I want to send something I can validate. Can we use PV to see how fast it sends the data? I mean, it'll, it'll basically be instant. How much do I send? Oh, it never stops. Yeah, that makes sense. Nice. Um, we'll use end load instead. 
Yo, I gotta stop eating this candy. Shit. This is why I don't bring candy next to my desk. Bad idea. Bad idea. We're sharing his gang. What's going on here? What exactly are you doing? What is the goal? We're just writing a TCP stack for a custom OS. That's really all we're up to right now. The goal is just to get a TCP stack so I can get data out of the um, OS. More specifically, get large chunks of data. Okay. So then I can trim sent. I can say um send plus equals that. If it exceeds the re remote window, we got issues. And then here I will do while buff.wan is greater than zero. This will be a mute buff right so while there's something to send although should we allow sending zero size packets and then technically we want to do sent here sent plus remain but that could potentially go out of bounds i think i mean technically not because we make sure it's in bounds of the window which we use during remain. If it exceeds buffer length, it could go over the window. Yeah, we actually want to do remain there instead of window. If act remain exceeds that, we have a problem. Uh, we'll go this way. Okay. Oh, if you're not familiar with that TCP, uh, like what a TCP stack is or what TCP is, TCP is kind of the, the underlying protocol that is used to send and receive kind of all the data that you use when you're on a, a computer. That's kind of the protocol that you use when you're communicating with websites and stuff. Um, so that's effectively what we're implementing. It's a way of sending and receiving data between computers over, over the network. Or over really any medium, but typically a network. Okay, perfect. That's what I wanted to see. That index is out of bounds. Is that what I want to see? That's on 89. Oh, buff.len. Um, minus sent. And we'll do checked sub here just because... I'm scared. Here we go. Bam. So this should work. Okay. Unwrap on none value on 85. Wow, so we did check sub. I'm kind of surprised. How would we ever have more sent than what we sent? Let's let's just trim this down so we don't have to wait so long. Let's go to two megs. Okay, and then we'll do print buff len and then sent buff dot len sent. I do think I have to clip this value. I have to trim this value down myself. Sent all that shit. Bufflin is this. Sent is 21. Did I do a retransmit? I currently always update the sequence. I actually need to reset the sequence. When I go to send again. So we'll do um, self dot uh, 
Um, when I get to this stage, no, I just recompute this stuff. I think I'm fine. Or will I end up pushing that sequence? If I go to retransmit something, I'll end up bumping the sequence, which is a problem. I'm guessing, I'm guessing I dropped a packet. I'm guessing I dropped a packet in that retransmit because this, I think this is the problem. And if I sent more then of course the server comes back because it thinks I sent more than I did. Um, okay, we start off figuring out how much we can send. We then clip everything down. We then send MSS size chunks, and then we update our sequence. And we need a way for our sequence to rewind. I guess not necessarily. You take into effect that the sending window can be changed in every TCP segment by the receiver. Um, I mean, they shouldn't, they shouldn't be able to like shorten their window. Otherwise, TCP wouldn't work because you'd have to wait for every single act. So I can blast for their window size. I do update their window, but that's fine because then I would just send less the next uh, send. Unact is this. Wrapping sub. My sequence minus that. That gets unacknowledged. Take the remote window, subtract that off. Oh, window size could be zero. This could go zero. Check sub. On act. I just want to see. This should... This is probably going to panic here. I think... Maybe? I mean, this should, this actually shouldn't, this shouldn't panic. Eighty-six. Yeah, this scent is going over, but this one's fine. This is a sliding window. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm doing. I'd, I'd take that into account. Wrapping sub. Yes, that'll tell me the unacknowledged bytes. I then determine how much I can send it. By taking the remote window, I subtract the unacknowledged bytes. Which, in theory, they could change the window size, and that could be fucked. So we'll do saturating sub. That way it just becomes zero. That means we won't send anything. So if they send us a window size of zero, we just we just won't have anything there. Buff sent. Sent plus sent plus sent to sent plus remain. Um, while we have a chunk, get access to the window, push, push it out if it's the last one, send our sequence in the remote sequence. 
as the ack, write out the chunk, update our sequence, send the packet, and do that in a loop until we've used up the entire window. So while the window has space, we just dump shit into it. Then, if we got a TCP packet and it's an ACK and it's destined to us, and the bytes left for to ACK is good, then we update the number of bytes sent. Based on the difference, I guess maybe these can go back in time. I could say if if it's greater than remain seek minus ack should never be greater than remain then we have a problem otherwise it should be less than that at which point this is going to give us the increase in the ack and we can say if the Let's ack increase is equal to tcp.ack wrapping sub self remote ack. We can say if ack increase is less than, uh, if it's greater than remain, continue, which is, um, uh, Ack is increasing more than expected. Then at this point, this is Ack increase. If packets get out of order, that could have happened where it would like go back, but I think we would have seen like all Fs there, so I don't think that is the bug. If the acknowledgement increase exceeds the remainder so if that sequence minus that so we make sure that we don't go out of bounds of what we sent and we make sure that we don't and we make sure that we are not we make sure that we're increasing and not going negative, not going back in time. If it's equal to remain, that would be fine. That would just be we're hopping from that to there. And I think that bounds checks all of those. Obviously, this is still wrong because there's just something stupid I'm doing. Oh, sent zero. Um, I guess then here we can say if self.remote ack is equal to self.sequence and, uh, oh, we don't have buff len is zero. Oh, I'm not advancing buff. Wait, did that actually fix it? Whatever I just did though. I don't know if that's the saturating. But I think that logic is correct now. First we compute if this ack is within what we possibly could have sent it. Then we check, did it increase by more than what we could have sent it? Um, I guess that's possible. Yeah, this is possible. Right, that can be greater than remain if the if the remote side was already behind. So if we sent something twice in a row, this could happen. So if we already sent it ten bytes and we sent a hundred more bytes, it's possible that this would exceed that, but it would never exceed this because this is the sequence. Well, it could exceed this, couldn't it? Yeah, that could happen. 
This is this this is not valid. Mm -mm. What's the correct logic then? I guess I could save this starting act. I could save this, um. Could just do a large number. I think I have to save the old, the old stuff on act. Right, we're computing on act. So we can say on act. Get the number of bytes left for the remote to act. But I don't know how I bound that. I think it would just be window size. It's not necessarily remain, but window size should work. Same with this one. I mean, it could change that window. Oh, this looks good. Sliding window operation. Um, they both have their own sequences. Current sequence, a uh, transmitter and yeah, each have a window size. The receiver may also keep track of the highest sequence number yet received. One more than the sequence number of the for simple receives that only expect packets, packets in order, so the same as that, blah, blah, blah. Here's an idea. You could chop off your buffer at the end of the loop instead of changing. Um, I don't necessarily know what you mean in that case. Um, okay, so the sequence numbers always obey this rule this is what we want to this is what we want to validate right the highest acknowledgement received by the transmitter cannot be higher than the highest number acknowledged by the receiver buff is buff delta sent yeah that's what i'm gonna do yeah that's that's what, i'm not doing that right now but that's what i'm gonna do i'm just trying to figure out this logic um the highest acknowledgement received by the transmitter cannot be higher than the highest NR acknowledged by the receiver. I guess that's, so for transmitter, it may translate, it transmit up to WT packets ahead of the latest acknowledgement. That is, it might, it may transmit packet number NT as long as it fits in the window, right? Um, I mean, I could make sure that the acts are just in order. No, but they can skip. Yeah, they can skip. But I don't think, I think this is fine. I don't think the distance between my sequence and its ACK can ever exceed the window size that I have. I guess it could decrease its window. If it dropped its window to zero mid-transmit, um, then this could potentially happen. Right? 
Ano eh. Every other packet will be treated like a drop packet. Yeah. Highest acknowledgement number received by the transmitter cannot be higher. You can do that. Yeah, they'd be. Tr yeah, yeah. Fuck. This tells me number of unacted packets, and I want to bounce check it, but I can't do this. Do I just not worry about it? Do I just not fucking care? Well, I don't want it to... Okay, okay. So this is, if we do self.remote ack, this is um, get number of unacknowledged bytes. So these are, the, this is what we know. This is the number of unacknowledged bytes from the server. And then what we can say, the ack increase, get the amount of bytes that this Act would increase the act count by, right? And we can say if the acknowledgement increase exceeds the unact bytes, then what are you doing? Um, acknowledged bytes that were not sent. This is the correct logic, I think. So I use the old act that I have and the old sequence I have, or my sequence. I take my sequence of bytes that I have sent. I subtract off the remote act from the server. This tells me the number of unacknowledged bytes by the server. I then compute the amount that this new act increases from the previous remote act that I have stored. I then check if that is greater than the number of unacknowledged bytes from previously, then it's fucked. In which case, bye bye. In this case, we can then increase the number of sent bytes by the acknowledgement increase, which is the amount that it increased by, and we can print sent, and we make sure that the sequence doesn't change because we don't handle uh, more data sending. This is now correct. This is number of bytes that I have sent and it hasn't act, and then here I'm making sure that it, do it doesn't act more than I've already sent. 100%. 100%. It's still not gonna work because I don't advance buffer. Um, unwrap on a non eighty six. Fuck. How does this act more than I sent? I don't get it. Oh, I'm doing that. I'm fucking up. I'm oversending. I'm still going to keep that check seven, but now I just have to do this. Um, no, I slice it up here. I slice it up here. How am I sending more? Let me just check that. Let me dumb is u size dumb plus equals chunk dot len print actually sent dumb. Am I oversending? And I don't think I am. If a single segment, segment 100 is lost, the receiver cannot acknowledge packets above number 100. Yeah. Yep, I, I know that. No, I think I have all the logic figured out. I'm not too worried about it anymore. I just need to figure out why the fuck I'm sending more than my buffer size.
If buff land is greater than zero. Oh, uh, if buff sent. But wouldn't this just converge to zero? That's what I would expect. That's the behavior I expect. Yeah, this is just looping. And then if sent. Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna loop. This shouldn't this shouldn't send more than I have, right? It just shouldn't. Do you chop off the buffer? I don't, but I don't think that matters because I, I cut it up here. I just don't understand why I'm sending more than the buffer size. Like I'm I am doing that. That's happening here. Send the first part over and over again? I'm not, because I update sent. Right? Um, I think a packet's probably getting dropped. I think if a packet gets dropped, if a packet gets dropped, then I update my sequence erroneously, or I like retransmit something. Yeah, oh, I resend a lot of shit. That's what's happening. I resend a bunch of shit. Yep, 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 yep. I fuck up. Um, basically, I send starting from there, and then I need to update. Uh, I need to also store the sequence number for that sent. Um, so this is uh, sequence number of sent amount and then number of bytes sent and this is going to start at self.sequence and then when i start a resend i will do let self.sequence is equal to sent.0 not let but this is a uh, reset the sequence And then this is dot one. Reset the sequence to the, I guess retransmits, I need to wait for a drop and then I time out, I guess. So I don't necessarily want to do that. Um... Well, I just want to go... Yeah, I just want to slice up the buff. But I need a way of getting back to it. So we'll do, like, pointer. Here, we'll do this. Pointer is buff. Right? So this is a pointer to the data to send. Buff doesn't change anymore. Now, this will be based on pointer... And then pointer, we will advance every time we send something. Right here at the end. Pointer is equal to ref pointer sent plus remain. So we sent that much. That's how much we actually sent. Oh, we don't have sent anymore. Yeah, it's just dot remain. And then this is pointer. Pointer.len. The smaller between the two. And then if we don't get an act for a certain amount of time, then we go back and we update pointer to a previous value. Sound like you need a way to test drop and delay packets? Yeah, I, I will do that. Once, once I have this written, so this will go through the chunks, advance the pointer, reflecting what we sent. Remain will never be out of bounds. And then 140 sent. Uh, 
Okay, get the number of unacknowledged. We make sure that we're not advancing the ACK past what it's supposed to be. Here we go. I think that's literally everything. Uh, test.text. Oh, and then this we need to exit. Oh, this is just while pointer len is greater than zero. Sum. This is the only place where we can return success. And then here we're going to do print send complete. And if we got there, the send is complete. Some next level shit right there. Yeah, okay. Test.text is exactly 209.7159, which is exactly what we sent. So I'm just going to send a number 11223344. What is that? 11 megs? 55. Five. So that is. It's about a gig. We'll send about a gig. Come on. Come on. I think it dropped a packet. Sweet. Oh, no, it didn't. Wow. LSL test.txt. 11223344455. No PV. Yeah. I'm going to dev null this. Can PV dev null it? I don't know what NCAT uses. Jeez, my like perf is getting fucking slaughtered. NCAT, man. Oh, I'm doing. Can Linux really not fucking handle this? I'm gonna kill these QMUs quick. Um, it's this machine. Um, I don't know why that's using like full fucking CPU, shutting it down. Well, that machine is fucked. It will force off. Oh, maybe it was installing updates. I don't know. <laughs> Bye. Okay, so. NCAT using a fuck ton of CPU. 50% of a core, send complete. Okay, so how do I, how do I PV? Just PV. It's not working. Oh, I pipe it or I cat? I probably pipe it. I'm guessing I pipe it into PV. That would probably make more sense. Here we go. No, that's doing not what I want. How do I shut it up? Oh, do I just uh, this? Is that the is that the play? Is that how is that how Linux works? 103 megs a second. Oh. <laughs> okay, I was trying to figure out why it's not gi uh, 10 gig, and this machine isn't on 10 gig. The server's on 10 gig. But this is not on 10 gig. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense. But yeah, it's 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 easily saturating, right? Yeah, fucking easy. And that's at 500 byte packets too. 
It's a bit aggressive for NCAT. NCAT's using a lot of CPU to do that. Get the new server, it won't be here for weeks. Okay, so now we don't handle retransmits, right? Basically, eventually, we will like not get an ACK. And if we don't get an ACK, then eventually we would need to, and this will not stop until we get ACKs, right? No, this won't stop. This will just keep, this will return before I get axe. So then at the end, yeah, I think I just want to loop. I want to loop. And then I want to say, um, if pointer len is zero and self dot remote ack is equal to self dot sequence, return sum this is right everything has been written and has been act right if the buffer we want to send is zero and the remote act is identical to our sequence then we've sent everything and this should still work right Send complete, nice. So that means that this does not return until everything has been acknowledged, which is great. Okay, what's the tool for fucking up things dropping? Um, TC, check out the Linux program called TC. So I've used something, uh, I've used something on Windows, Clumsy, I think, which is really sweet, but we'll see if we can get this going. Um, actually, like, we'll do Linux TCP uh, drop test. Um, drop launch. Like, how would I use TC to do that? Otherwise, I might just fire up Clumsy in a VM because it's easy. But yeah, basically, right now on a drop packet, I would just sit and I'd wait for axe. At, at some stage, the window is zero, and I'd be waiting for axe, and I would never actually send new stuff. But yeah, this should be correct. Unact is this. Act increase is this. If the act increase exceeds the unact, then we don't like it. Otherwise, update our axe. Search results. Um, TC test drop packets. Okay, how to drop a packet. There we go, simulate. Oh, stack overflow, we're good. Net M to simulate networks. Uh, emulating, oh, is this called Net M? I bet this is the package that contains that tool. Oh, maybe not. Lost 3%, okay. Um, is there a way for me to do that on a specific port? Dude, this is sick. Packet loss. TC, this, dev, this. Oh, what's TC? Qdisk. Change dev emp s zero, emp twenty five s zero I think, six s zero, um root. Oh, I gotta create it first. Pseudo tcq disk add. Dev emp six s zero roots. Net em help. There we go. Oh, reordering loss.
loss 0.1%, but I want to do it on a specific... I don't want to do it on all packets, right? Um, correlation can be used. Bur I mean, like burst losses. Um... I'm guessing 0 0.1 is probably fine. It's not going to hurt the stream. Like, I don't care locally, right? But I care about the stream. I don't want the stream to get really fucked. I'm guessing 0.1% is fine. But I'd love to be able to do it only on a single port. Um, fuck it. All right, I got 1% packet loss, or 0.1% packet loss, which is very rare, so I don't think it'll really affect the stream, but it should affect this. This should get stuck. Hey, Supercuber, how you doing? Oops. Remove. Delete. What is it? What is it to remove it? Dell? Nah, I don't fucking know. Alright, so why is that not... And then this is modify. God damn it. Fucking hate this shit, man. Just give me a... Give me that... Oh, ch oh change. Who ever says change? Dude, how is this not dropping and getting stuck? Oh, um, wait. No. No, I feel like this should get stuck. Like, TFTP is getting stuck. But for some reason, this doesn't. Okay, does this somehow handle packet drops and I don't know how? Did I accidentally do that? No, because I always advance pointer. I never will retransmit anything. It's impossible for me to retransmit something. Remain is just the window or the length of the pointer and I always advance that unconditionally. I have no way to escape this early. How the fuck does this work? Um, like I'm always, I'm constantly dropping packets on TFTP, but I'm not dropping packets. Maybe this doesn't drop inbound. No, if it drops out inbound or outbound, it should cause, actually outbound drops are okay as long as it's not the very last packet. Yeah, this is probably dropping outbound, isn't it? 100%. Because I will pick up a later ACK and I'll be just fine. I need it to drop inbound packets. Is there a way to drop inbound? Next traffic shaping with this. on egress, outgoing or forwarding. You don't have control over incoming. Ah. With IP tables I can do it. I 
IP tables has FW mark that can mark packages. Okay. Fuck. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> it's too it's too good. <laughs> It won't handle a single dropped received packet. But it will handle dropped transmits as long as they're not the last one. You want to set the filter to have a handle of X? So I would have to set up IP tables, which I don't think I have set up. Number six. I close it. Pre-writing T mangle J mark set mark six and what does that do that just dumps them it basically discards them um yeah it's only for that. Windows has a good one. I might just use a Windows VM, maybe. It's just going to be easier. I really don't want to fuck up my host. I'm going to remove this. Um, delete dev this. Okay, so I shouldn't be able to change it. Okay. All right, we're just gonna use a Windows VM. I really don't wanna fuck with my host IP tables while I'm streaming. I gotta wait for Vert Manager to open because QT or whatever it uses takes about 30 seconds to launch. Doing something stupid. I gotta figure out what it is. It's so annoying that it takes so long to open. Um, yeah, we can use this. We'll just give it network. Boot that shit. I'm really surprised there's not a better way in Linux. There's got to be. Someone probably has to make a fucking tool for Linux. Maybe Clumsy works on Linux? Holy shit. Does it work on Linux? Oh, nope. Doesn't. Damn. TC config, make it easy to set up packet loss. I want like a fucking GUI is what I want. Um, is this only outbound? How do I set this up inbound? Documentation. Set traffic control. Set a packet loss. And will that do both traffic control of incoming, direction incoming? Okay. 
Let's try it. TC set. This is what this is called. Let's try it. I like it. Oh my god, how many depths do you have? Did that succeed? Um pseudo TC set. Well, well, pip, uh, py, python, actually pip uninstall. Okay. Python 3 and pip install. Let's see if it works Python 3. Python 3 TC set TC set ENP6 S0 direction incoming um loss 0.1% network 1 2.168 dot whatever. I mean, it doesn't really matter. The network's always going to be the same. Okay. Okay. So it ran once. So let's see. Is this is this the dream? Yes! Yes! It stops! It gets stuck! Fuck yeah! It's borked! And this should eventually resume here. Like, this will retry. Yeah, I want to do a port filter. TC Dell. Shaping rule not found. Okay, can I do this now? And then port 2000. Um, overwrite. Right? So this is only on port 2000 now. Hopefully that... Um, reboot... Unfortunately, TFTP cannot really survive that, it seems. So we'll restart PyPixie, and we'll only filter uh, incoming on a specific port. Why chocolate milk? It's just a fun name. All right, not booted yet. Oh my God. Hey, nice, it got stuck. Perfect, and then, yep, can't reconnect. Okay, it gets stuck pretty much right away. Great, good to see, good to see. Now this is pretty easy. Now we just say, um, I think the window size, we only care about the window size being zero, right? So let's say, um,
Um. Oh yeah. What we can do. At this point, we know the window size is zero. It's not always zero, actually. Um. Well. Uh. Now we can start a timer. Uh, time out is equal to time future 100,000, right? You know what? Yeah, 100,000 is fine. Uh, let me... Time out is not zero. Time out for resending some data. And then what we can do is we can say if... Uh, okay, we set that time out. Oh, uh, we don't want to keep doing that. We only want to do this when the when that while breaks. Um, basically, when the window size is zero, right? If the window size goes to zero, then we need to wait for it to all send. We need to wait for a window size update. So I need to save. The last act. Um, I'll never, I'll never jump back more than one gig. So I can compute how far off I am from the pointer. Yeah. So I start a timer, and then I think this is just like while. Because that can return out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let timeout is this. Set a, ti set a timeout here. Then here. Get rid of that shit. Oops. 157. Um, and I need to bookmark this TC set. Done. Okay. Are you planning to do kernel fuzzing with chocolate milk? Absolutely. Absolutely. 157. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we added another leap. So we're going to do while. I guess while the window size is zero. While, yeah. Maybe we just do it here. Hmm. I can... Yeah. I don't know. I haven't decided yet how I want to structure this. I think this is more how I want to do it. Advance the pointer, reflecting what we sent. So the first thing we're going to do is check for a packet. Then we compute all of this shit. And is this valid now that we put it here? Yeah, this is fine. If pointer line is zero and that, then we return out. That's the only condition where we can return out. So then what we can do is here, uh, let's timeout is equal to zero, mute. Um, timeout on X, and then here we can say, if remain is zero, continue. Um, we either have no window available to send anything, or we have sent any everything and we're waiting for the final act, right? So at this point, timeout is equal to time. Uh, we can just set it here. Timeout is equal to time. Because we fill up the window or we send everything. Then we send timeout is time future. Uh, just 100,000. So this is set a timeout to wait for a window update, right? So then we set a timeout, then we run up here, 
And then what I can do is I can say if CPU RDTSC exceeds the timeout, then I can say print timed out. We'll just panic here. We'll just panic on timed out. Okay, nice. Nice. And if we don't have that packet loss on, if we turn that off, if we set the loss to zero, uh, can I just do this? How do I remove it? All. Okay, so this should no longer fail. We shouldn't get a timeout, and we don't. No timeouts. Looks good. We have nothing dropping. At a K. This is net NCAT, but yeah, we'll see. And then reset it. Nice. Okay. Thank you. I knew there was a flag. I was too lazy. Okay, so now we're gonna add 0.1% packet loss. So very minor. And I detect a timeout condition. And in this case, uh, we didn't get an ACK in a timely manner. And we either have no window left or we have sent everything and we're waiting waiting for the final ACK. So we didn't get an ACK in a timely manner, so at this point we need to compute where to set pointer. So we're gonna do pointer is equal to buff dot dot something. <laughs> where that something is going to be um, sent is equal to Sense is equal to buff.len minus pointer.len, right? So this is compute how much we have sent so far, and then compute where to restart transmission, transmission from due to the drop. Um, uh, Resend, in this case we're gonna get, yeah, resend is equal to sent minus self remote ack, uh, self dot, uh, sequence. Uh, wrapping sub so this is like this is an act right get act get the number of unacknowledged bytes right so at this point we have this many unacknowledged bytes right so this should print on act. So that's our sequence. Our sequence minus the the most recent act that we've gotten from the server. And at this point we've timed out. So timed out and yeah, that's basically telling me and that's going to be like a random ish number. I wonder if it's oh yeah, there's no jitter on this. It's always the same packet that gets dropped. So that's how far ahead we are. Yeah. Um, so that's how far ahead we are. So then what we can do is we can determine where we want to transmit from. So we'll do, go from, we'll set pointer equal to buff for sent minus unact dot dot. Right? Mm. 
that's not necessarily true. Um, because once again, we can be in a state where there are things that were sent by a previous sender that haven't been act. I mean, not in this model because we don't return from send until everything's been act. But that might eventually be something we have. I don't know. So subtract. Get the number of unacknowledged bytes. Uh, on. Get the number of unacknowledged bytes and then subtract unact. Um, let resend is equal to, yeah, if someone else didn't have stuff sent, we can't resend it. So this is actually fine here. Yeah, we, we can never hit this circumstance. So get the number of unacknowledged bytes. Uh, rewind the pointer. So at this point, the pointer now points to sent minus unact. So we're going to go backwards because this is the buff len minus pointer len. Yep, that's the number of bytes we've sent. If it's zero, if we've sent everything, this is zero, and that's everything. Then we take that and we subtract off the amount between what we have sent and the remote ack. And then uh, uh, set sequence back to old sequence, right? Self.sequence is equal to self.remote ack. Correct? Print dropped packet resending. And now we'll go and recompute this, and we'll now have window again, right? We basically rewind to that location because this sent pegs us to pointer, and then we subtract off from pointer on act, which is the distance we are a front in front of the remote act. And this should now be correct. This should now handle drop packets. Yep. Pretty big perf loss, but this perf loss is basically uh, directly related to the number of dropped packets. But this should be able to transmit everything. And since I know my ping is really low here, I can just do this and This will now retransmit, and there we go. We're sending at 80 megs a second with packet loss. And then eventually it'll get to the end. Okay, so now we survive packet loss, and we'll just write this to a test file, just so we can validate it's actually got all the bytes and we didn't get extras but I don't think that's going to be the case. That's everything sent. LSL on test.txt. 11223344455 bytes, exactly as many as we wanted to send. So now let's fill this with a pattern and make sure that it truly is sending the data that we want it to. Um, this is going to be, um, vec is going to be 0u64, and it'll contain, I don't know, a meg of that. That's 8 megs. That's a gig. So then we'll do, for this in, um, uh, data dot iter mute dot enumerate dot for each i i x x is i i right okay and then we just have to do this do 
Rust really needs stuff to support this. This is one of the worst things about Rust to this day, and it drives me fucking nuts. Um... I can't wait till Russ gets fucking safe casting. We need it so bad. Fucking nest. It's like just required. In my opinion. In a systems language, it's unacceptable to not have that. Okay, we've got losses. We're dropping shit. Things are getting fucked up. And we got no problems. This is one of the best TCP stacks that's ever been written, to be honest. <laughs> okay, xxd test uh, text tail. Wow. Wow, xxd. We'll just print head. Alright, well that looks good. So, verify.py open test.txt rb data this.read for ii in range 0 to len data for 8 import struct struct unpack kill data ii times 8 oh we already do that ii to ii plus 8 0 assert ii divided by 8 is equal to this uh print you good Come on, Python. You got this. <laughs> you got this, Python. It's not too hard. I'm pretty sure it's successful, though. Because <laughs> it doesn't look like we've got any problems. We would have had problems probably really early if we had a big flaw. Hey, you good? <laughs> Woo! So there you go. That's a gig. We sent a gig. No problem. Everything matched. It was identical to what we sent. Um, and that's with packet loss. A 0.1% packet loss. No problem. Now 5 gigs. It's the same. It's the same thing. Damn it, Desu. <laughs> okay. Oh. <sighs> It's different because wrapping. Oh, you right. You right. You right. Are you okay with 16 gigs? Is 16 gigs acceptable to you, Desu? Oh, <laughs> this machine doesn't. This machine has 8 gigs of RAM. What a piece of shit. Oh my god. God. Oh. <laughs> six, six it is. <laughs> oh. Seven. <laughs> you bitch. Oh, did I exhaust all physical memory? Is it? It's probably not. It's probably not happy. I probably should have a. Probably should have something that lets it recover from oom. <laughs> Sixteen gigs is a bit excessive. Look, man. Oh, I could do it from a VM. 
Yeah, we'll just kill this. Are we out of RAM? Yeah, we got we got RAM problems. Okay, we'll just we'll do it in a VM. Ah, thirty. Damn it. I mean, we're, we're trying it with seven gigs. We're trying it with seven gigs. <laughs> no problems that can't be solved by a new server. I will have slightly more than eight gigs of RAM in the new server. <laughs> okay, here we go. Data coming in. Coming in hot. Do I even have room on this? Yeah, I got plenty of space. What's the news on the server? Just waiting, just waiting for it to be built. Nothing I can do but wait. We can hope. We can dream. Have you tried to hack SCADA systems? I have not. I heard they are very easy though. Um, send complete. Wait, what? Oh, divided by 16. I debated. Chat, you got debated. Um. um how am I going to verify this? Is there a better way? Do I just do it in Rust? Cargo new bin verify, verify, bin source. We're against the clock right now. Uh, uh, let, let buff is standard FS read test dot text unwrap. Uh, uh, let's buff is unsafe. Core slice from raw parts. Buff as pointer as. Const u64 buff dot len divided by eight. Uh, for for i i in i i val in buff dot iter dot enumerate asserts val is i i touch test car run release fuck. As U sixty four. Okay, that should do. <laughs> okay, send complete. <laughs> uh, Oh, and we gotta add our you good. You good? <laughs> All right, so that's seven gigs. So that wrapped boundaries and stuff too. So that's pretty much as aggressive as you can get. We ignore all options. So if the server's like telling us, hey, we, we have a larger window than 64K, it just, we just don't give a shit. Right now, we just treat the window as bytes, which is always valid. It just means we'll undershoot the window. Um, but that's like, this is 100% acceptable, right? So cargo, um, yeah, pending coverage, 1213. And so now I buffer up this coverage. Let's do this. Now ACK. Yeah, we never use ACK because we never will until we send data. Um, 
Okay, so that works. Now we just need to do receives, and receives are easier. -ish, kind of. What do I do? I just receive until a push? What do I want to do? I think I just want to receive until a push, right? How big is the stack? Oh, man. Oh, and by the way, no unsafe code. <laughs> no unsafe code. Woo! Woo, lad. Fucking pogs for that right there. No unsafe code in this entire stack. Pub FN receive. Hey, KDOT, how you doing, man? Good to see you around. Mute self. And then if this can't send it, it just blocks forever, which is actually the behavior I want. It retries forever. It never gives up, which I actually am okay with that right now because I I don't really... I, I would need to have it return a result that's like not sent or total byte sent or something. I, I can do that. Like I have all that information. It's not too hard to add. Oh, the buffer might be unaligned. Yeah, I don't I don't give a shit. <laughs> but yes, I I do know that. <laughs> it's XD6. It doesn't care. <laughs> yeah, technically I should be um uh, I would have to make an aligned vector. I don't think there's a great way to do that, but <laughs> All right. Sends are easy, right, man? Or receives are easy, right? So we want to this is um send a payload over the TCP connection. Currently this returns sum if and only if all, all bytes are sent. If the send never completes, this function never returns, right? That sucks. That's eventually something we wanna change, but at least the comment reflects what this does. And that's what's important to me. 187. So this is going to receive You almost used if. <laughs> I know. It's correct. Um, receives. How do I want to do this? Do I want to receive into a vector until a push? Or do I want to receive into a fixed size buffer? Fixed size buffer is more classical. Vector until a push. Yeah, I guess you d you can't really rely on pushes. Yeah, we're just gonna receive receives uh, data until uh, buff is full. We'll just do that. I I like this. This is basically receive all, like send all and receive all. Um, or I think I can't remember what Rust calls its receive all. Um, this is buff mute mutable reference to U8s. Same thing doesn't return some unless all bytes are successfully read. Uh, currently, this never times out if the data does not all get received. Okay, so this is now really easy. So when we do a receive, all we wanna do is we do this. And it's gonna be kind of similar to what we do before. Like before we technically don't allow something to transmit while we're receiving. Um, everything's very synchronous, send, receive right now. So we're gonna do the same thing here. Um, you know what, this is in a loop. And then we're gonna have a pointer to the buffer. Let mute pointer is equal to buff. This is uh, get a pointer to the buffer. Then we receive a packet. If it's a TCP packet and it's destined for us and it's an ACK, then we determine the number of 
unacknowledged bytes. In this case, we're going to go self.ack, our own ack, and we're going to subtract off the remote sequence. Eh, nah, we're changing this shit up. All we care about so far is just this. Update the server state. Remote ack and TCP ack. So right now, we receive a packet if it's destined to us, and it's an ACK. Then we update the state. In this case, we're not getting the ACK. We're actually updating the sequence. So we're going to assert self remote ACK is equal to TCP ACK. Uh, currently, we don't support uh, sending while, the, while we're receiving. Right? It's a pretty big limitation, but it's not really something I'm too worried about. I just want to get this running, and I control the server entirely right now, so it's just, it's not too crazy. This is the remote uh, sequence, and this is the sequence. So we update the window in the sequence. Technically, the window doesn't matter here either, so we're going to say assert self remote. I mean, technically, it can change its window, but we're just going to assert that that doesn't change. Actually, we'll just, this is fine. We'll update the window. I'm fucking with that. So, update the sequence, update the window. That's everything from the packet that we care about. So then what we're going to do is we have a payload at this point. And the payload, we know our, we basically just have to get the index into the buffer of what we just received. And then we have to send a response. It's like pretty fucking easy to do these receives. Um... So we'll do uh, compute the index into the buffer for this receive. And this is done by offset is equal to um, index into the pointer for this receive. So our ACK is going to be Oh, we got to retransmit our axe, too. Okay, maybe it's hard. Compute the index into the pointer for this receive. I guess... No, I don't need to resend axe. I'll just keep sending my axe. Every time I get a packet, I'll just send my axe. Yeah. So, we'll offset is equal to... Um... Actually, offset's always zero, right? If self.remote sequence is equal to, is that pre-index or post-index? It's pre-index, right? You update the, we update the index before sending, right? No, we update it afterwards. Okay, so the sequence trails it. So in which case, we'll say if the remote sequence is equal to the RAC, um, if this is the next packet we are expecting, then print got the next packet. Well, whatever, we'll just keep writing code. So at this stage, we're going to copy into pointer, copy from slice, and this is um let's see we're going to get the remote sequence if it's equal to the act so what we have act so we are currently at parity so when we get the next packet this will be true it's literally identical at which point we will, if, I think if we receive more, I just discard the data. No, I can put it back in the queue. I can put it in the receive window. Oh yeah, the first thing I wanna do is I wanna drain things from the window. I think that's what I, I, I'll need to do. But here we're going to say if, we'll just do this quick. Um, assert pointer 
len is less than or equal to uh, tcp.payload.len. This is going. To, this assertion will fail if it sends more than we're expecting, which is fine. Um, but we need to have a place to put that remaining data. So in this case, we're going to copy from slice into tcp payload len. So we don't handle the remainder right now. And we're just going to copy, because when we do the remainder, we have to implement windowing, which we have to kind of do up here and stuff too. So there's a bunch of different places where we kind of have to update stuff. So we are going to copy from slice. Um, yeah, just tcp.payload. This is copy the bytes in. And then at this point, we just send an ack, but we actually are going to unconditionally ack. Um, and then, oh, and then here we advance pointer. Pointer is equal to ref pointer tcp.payload.len. So we advance the pointer. And then here, we will loop um, while the pointer is greater than that, because we can always update the ACK. Yeah, while the pointer, while there's something to do, while there's something to receive, when there's nothing to receive, we're done, then at this point, ACK everything so far. And what does that look like? This is basically how we send a packet. Ack everything so far. We make a packet. We're then going to send an ack. We have no push here. We're going to just send our sequence and then the remote sequence. Oh, that could go backwards, potentially. Um, allocate a packet. Lock that shit. Then we're going to ACK, we're going to give our sequence, and then the remote sequence as our ACK, and then our window size, and that's it. We're just sending an ACK. Uh, and we're always going to flush on an ACK. We'll just guarantee that ACKs actually get flushed out. Um, oops, payload, not a method, where, 219, oh, yeah, TCP payload, guess we ref that then, no, it's already a ref, it's one line, nice, mutability difference, okay, Still up, dude? Yeah, what up? What are you doing up? Just hanging out. <laughs> I'm, I'm at a, I'm at a good sleep schedule. Fuck yeah, dude. The sun's coming up. It's nice. First <laughs> Fucking classic. We sent seven gigs of data over TCP. <laughs> I mean, there's not much to see. We can just send data. Here, here's what the code looks like. We uh, allocated a, a little buffer, just a small little buffer. Oh, that's pretty small, yeah. And then we fill it with a pattern, an incrementing U64. Really oh, sophisticated. Okay, yeah. uh, they call that a hash. Oh, it's a hashing. It's a cryptographic. It's a cryptographically right? secure yes. hash. Looks, looks very hash. And then we send this. And then we print send complete and it works. And it runs at full speed over a gigabit. I'll have to test it on 10 gig, but I'm sure it will saturate fucking trivially. <laughs> it's like backing stuff up. Hell yeah. So now we're doing receive, and I'm pretty sure we like just got the basics done. But yeah. Almost got a TCP stack. And then we'll make this release. Flex on the world with our, our fuzzing technologies. How close are you to fuzzing on 
Uh, I mean, I can tactically use it right now to fuzz things, but right now I send coverage over UDP, so it takes it takes three seconds for the fuzzers to start. Oh, that's unusable. Yeah, <laughs> it's definitely unusable. <laughs> so, yeah, we're gonna we'll, we'll fix that up. But I with this I should be able to easily set up syncing, and I'm gonna have to rewrite my fucking server because my server uses UDP. And I'm just gonna switch everything to TCP because like I got it, so and it'll be good. Hell yeah, that's the plan. All right, get some sleep, man. <laughs> Enjoy. All right, all right. Uh, it doesn't need to be mutable. We don't even need to assign that. We're just sending it an ACK. and we need to make sure that this doesn't go backwards in time. Um, okay, so that's sending shit, and then we need to make something that actually, like, does stuff. So we're going to write a really, really complex protocol here. Uh, this is called test.py. We're going to import uh, from socket, import star. We're going to make a sock, which is equal to socket, af inet. I uh, sock stream IP proto TCP sock dot fuck. There's like a way to d do everything. I think. Well, whatever. We'll do the easy way. I think this is acceptable. Two thousand. Uh. Uh. Clients is equal to sock dot accept sock dot listen 50 prints it's client and like adder <laughs> hey we did it print client dot receive eight And then we're going to do client.send ASDF advanced. That is the advanced serialization detection frequency. So this will detect whether or not the serialization through TCP is working correctly. <laughs> Nothing but quality content here. Late night. <laughs> wow, <laughs> intense. Okay, we can just do a tcp.send, and we're just going to send foop waff. It's close to foop waffle, but it's just foop waff. Okay, so if I do this, I got foop waff. Now, I'm going to print this, and that should, uh, we should... Oh, fucking hell. <sighs> sock dot set sock opt soul reuse adder true one. It's like that. It's cl <sighs> Come on. Oh, wait. Wait. Fuck. It takes the salt socket. Ah. Damn it. Shit, now we gotta wait, I think. Cause there's pending shit. <laughs> what does foop waff stand for? <laughs> it's a secret. Now we gotta wait. Is there a way to kill this? Is there like a way to like forcibly say like fuck off? I'm just waiting for that send a timeout because the kernel's holding a buffer that it's trying to send to me that I never received. Okay, so we got a buffer. 
Hey, we're actually conforming to the API that we made a specification for. We'll unwrap this. We'll also unwrap this. And print rx buff. Okay. Holy. Wait. Oh, that's sent for. Oh, we never got the rx? Shit. Uh, print sent. Sent, okay. Um, so we got to receive. We slice up the buffer while there's stuff to do. Receive a packet. Technically, this will cause us to like teleport in time, potentially. So I want to bounce check that. If this is equal, so we'll say like print, um, print got stuff remote sequence. That's all I care about is the remote sequence. The act hasn't changed. That's good. Is that not all four bytes? Um, print. Oh, what's my ack? What's my ack? Oh, do I not update my ack? I need to update my ack here. Because this sends me a fin, I think. My ack is zero. My ack, during the handshake, when we do the connection, once we have successfully connected, I want to, remote sequence, oh, connection dot ack is equal to, that's not equal I set my acknowledge to the sequence I technically do that down here when I ack yeah self dot ack is equal to con remote sequence so that's the ack that we've sent okay uh, and this is connection And this one I do the wrapping ad, so this one it should be correct. I mean, I'm not using my ack, am I? Maybe I can go to the three. Because I never use my ack, do I? Um... Yeah, I don't think I need that. We'll just use the remote sequence. I think we're fine. Right? We did talk about this earlier, but I, I do think it's just confusing. Um, I guess ack is what I have sent. Yeah, they are slightly different. So uh, once I have sent it, I will update it. Um, oh, connection. So once I have sent it, that is what I have acknowledged. So anytime that I send an ack, um, I technically want to do ack is equal to self that remote sequence. Basically, any time I send an ack, we're going to do that right in the chunk. It's 
self dot ack is equal to self dot remote sequence. Now that packet can get dropped, but that's fine. But now any place that I send an ack, I update my local ack to the remote sequence. It's good. So this should now work. It's massively incorrect with like packet dropping, but there we go. So that's ASDF right there. So we're able to receive data. And I'm pretty sure this will work for arbitrary sizes too. So while we have something to receive, receive something, when we get a packet, every time we get a TCP packet, if ACK is zero, then it's not an ACK. We make sure that it hasn't changed its ACK state. We update the remote sequence in the window. We then, if the remote sequence is equal to what we ACKed, then we assert that the pointer length is less than the payload length. If it is, then we're going to copy the bytes in. Um, and then I will allocate a packet create that TCP packet, and then I just send the ACK with my current ACK state, which is remote sequence. And what I want to do is I want to bound that. I want to make sure that I don't let that exceed, I guess, my own window size. And then the window size is literally just that. Um, but yeah, this, this just works. Okay, so now if this sends ASDFFF, ASDFF, ASDFF, out of range. Um, oh, I wanted that. <laughs> Whoops. Not that big of a deal. It's rust. Okay, so that assertion fails. So what I need to do is now I need to make a concept of having a place to kind of throw packets. So, and that's basically the window, right? But when I, when I receive something that's not destined to me, I actually want to relinquish that packet back to the NIC. So like currently this works. I should be able to receive a large amount of data. So let's, let's try it. Um, for, I in range a meg. We'll just send um struct pack q i i right. Uh, import struct. And we don't handle like a graceful quits or exits or like, I just don't give a shit right now. <laughs> um, buff is this for a uh, loop for I, I and zero U64 asserts U64 from LE bytes. Um, is equal to ii. This is going to test a bunch of independent packets. Oh yeah, we don't have retransmits on ax. So this actually probably will fail. Right? So yeah, uh, we don't handle that packet loss right now. Here we go. Sending all this stuff and then eventually we get stuck, don't we? Really? Um, assert that the pointer length is greater than or equal to the payload length. Um, how am I getting extra data? How am I getting extra data there? I receive eight bytes per. 
Huh. I don't know what it's sending me at the end. Oh, it's probably sending me a fin. Or, yeah, it's probably sending me a fin. That would be my guess. Um... Yeah, on a fin, I want to, like, kind of tear everything down. But I feel like this shouldn't be able to handle packet loss right now. Let's try this. We're going to do... That's incoming. Well, we know incoming works. Overwrite. And can I do both directions? Is this just both directions, or is it just one? So this is now going to have some losses when we transmit stuff I guess the sending side is going to retransmit if it doesn't get an ACK and then I'll just respond with an ACK this already works never mind this already handles retransmits on drops right because if I don't get exactly what I want I will ACK every single packet I get um yeah okay so then what I need to do is I need to do the same sort of thing I need to determine unact on my side, and I need to make sure that doesn't exceed. Um, I basically need this logic, and I don't know why it's so hard for me to think through this, but don't support sending all this. Yeah, we'll just do this. Um, unact is equal to self.act. Oh, uh, self dot remote ack remote sequence it is, and we subtract off our ack. So we take the remote sequence, which is what we're going to ack, and then we subtract off our ack, and then I guess this doesn't really matter because we're hard requiring this. Well, yeah, we want to do this. I think this is then correct. Update the server state here. I think we're just fine. We basically say, we first make sure that nothing is changed on the act side of the remote. We then get the remote sequence, and if it's equal to exactly what we're expecting, then we update the server state. And here I can technically make sure everything here is good. So I can say, like, let transmit is equal to... Oh, that's actually fine. Yeah. Remote sequence... Oh, in this case, it is if the TCP sequence, if the new packet sequence is identical to our acknowledge, which is what we're expecting, it's the next packet in the list, then we'll update the remote sequence, we'll update the remote window, because we got like an in-order packet. So if, if things come out of order, we won't buffer them, right? We only accept in order. So if the packet is in order, then we know it's in order. We know that that sequence is valid because it's literally identical to our ACK. So we update the sequence. And we update the window. And that's it. We only update those things. And then here, we will send something. We will send our own ACK, I guess. Is that what I want? No, remote sequence only gets updated if it's equal, so it's actually identical. So in this case, if it's exactly what we're expecting, then we update the remote sequence in the window. Um, then, in all cases, we just ACK the remote sequence, and we only update that when we get in-order packets. Um, so this should handle this should handle packet loss. And because it's the sender who retransmits. So in the case of packet loss, 
Um, what did I change? Maybe I did break something. Maybe maybe this doesn't handle it right now. Um, if it's equal, update the server state. So the remote sequence is this. The remote window is this. We copy the bytes in. And pointer only advances in that situation. What am I doing wrong here? Allocate a packet, get the window lock, uh, shit that stuff out. And it's good, right? Update our act. I guess I want to send our act. But that's the same. It's the same. Our act is always identical. I had it right. Oh, I can drop this act. And then when I come around... So I don't, hmm. This act could get dropped. Right? The problem is definitely drop related. I don't think this is actually a... Uh, um, I don't think this is actually a bug. That's not equal. Unwrap that. If the sequence is equal, allocate a packet, update that, update my ACK that I have sent, I send it out. And then we only update the remote sequence if it's equal to our ACK. Um, I think that is packet loss, right? Is it always on the same one? <sighs> Shit. So before, the only difference is I would unconditionally update the server state, which would then mean I'd maybe act things that I don't have. Okay, so how is that different? If I don't get exactly in sequence, then I won't update these things, and I'll just send an old ACK, which is fine. Right? I'll just send an ACK that's old. And Linux will just retransmit. Oh, but I'll update my pointer. I'll update my pointer. I think, is that the issue? So like I come through on this 8,000th time, I have an act that I haven't sent, I then get something in, it doesn't match, so I act where I current, what I currently have, and then I'd come up here, right? Else print, Seek this, not equal to ack this. And I suspect that we'll hit this right before the failure. I'm doing something stupid. Oh, 
that happens a lot. Um, if it's equal to that. We only update the pointer when we get exactly what we're expecting. An act we update here to the remote sequence. Which is fine. Oh, is this one where our window is full? Oh, is this just like always not working? Print good. I don't think we're ever hitting that. I think this is just always wrong. At the start, it was good. And then very quickly, It became wrong. Copy the bytes. Create the TCP packet. Set the ACK. So you get one that's good. And we update the remote sequence in the remote window. Oh yeah, how how was it updating previously? How is the ACK advancing? Don't I wanna do, what? I think I wanna do self, What? I think I want to do basically this, right? Plus equals uh, tcp.payload.len. Something along that line. But I don't think that's going to work. Uh, equals self ack wrapping add se32 so we're going to take our acknowledge we're going to add but this means our acknowledge gets us ahead okay this We got a good, and then the next one we have a failure. While the pointer length is greater than zero. Really? Are we just getting a push? What What's it sending us? Oh, is the kernel batching stuff? Oh, I think the kernel's batching stuff here. Yeah, it's, it's, okay. So then, is this correct, where I do this? No. Because I have to update my ACK to reflect what I'm expecting. Right? Because I'm off. The next sequence we expect, I think that is right, but we haven't sent that ACK yet. Um, and if I did this, this would not work, because we would ACK ahead, I think, so this should fail. Um, 
I don't like that. Or do I advance the ack? How the fuck does that work? When I get a packet, do I add to the ack? I don't know why I'm like struggling on that. Okay. Data transfer. I think I send, I update it, don't I? Or is that wrong? Do I act greater than? Am I going crazy? Let me just test it, right? Yeah, I think I, I think I add it. I advance it, don't I? Because that's what I do here. I expect it to be advanced. So you send something, and then I act with the number of bytes that I got. It's correct. So this is um. Update the act. And this is just self remote sequence to indicate we read the bytes. And then we just send self ack. So everywhere that we do this, we actually want to do it slightly different. Self dot ack. self ack and this is con ack is equal to con remote sequence all right so every time we send an ack we send our sequence and our ack okay this should work Okay, and then the kernel's buffering stuff. Um, if I did client flush, this should test it as is. Good. Oh, yikes. That's a problem. Oh, well, the payload length is zero. Yeah, so it doesn't, it doesn't advance it. Okay. Okay, that's good. What keyboard do you use? It's a DOS keyboard with uh, Cherry MX Blues. Flush. Is there no flush? What? There's no way to flush? I think this will probably work then. Uh, clients, right, flush, oops,
Must be stir not bites. Oh, right, binary. Okay, it's still, yeah, it's still chunking them. All right, so we just gotta do that then. It's not right. Send all. So make sure all those bytes send. That's what we get. And, yep. Okay, so what we need to do is the window has to fill stuff in. So what we're going to do is um, let extras. Hey, new fic, how's it going? What's the prerequisite to learn about binary exploitation? I uh, gotta know probably C and assembly relatively well. I think that would be the like first prereq. Calculate the extra bytes from this packet. Extra is equal to extra is equal to self dot. Um, no, pointer.len, and there might not be extra, so this will be, um, tcp.payload.len.saturating sub, so if it is greater, then we'll have the extra bytes, if it is less than, um, it'll be zero. Okay, the extra bytes from this packet. So here we're going to copy um, to copy is equal to core compare min between pointer len and uh, tcp.payload.len. This is uh, computes the number of bytes to copy. Um, <laughs> finally I found a Python stream. This is Russ, bro. Oh. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoy Rust too. Rust is a really fun language. We do some, we do some Python here. We got Python right here. <laughs> it's just not much. Uh, compute the number of bytes to copy. Okay, we're just gonna do this. To copy. To copy dot dot. Copy the bytes in. Advance the pointer. To copy. Ooh, one liner. No, damn it. Oh, we tried that. Um, compute the number of bytes to copy, which is the smaller of the two, the pointer length, or the payload length. the pointer length or the payload length. We then copy, we slice both of them down to two copy, which is the smaller of the two, and we advance the pointer. Then at this point we can say if tcp.payload len is greater than two copy, um, check if there was a remainder of data. And if there's a remainder of data, if it's equal, then we copied everything. But if it's greater than, only in this situation, we want to get access to the TCP window for this connection. And then we'll do self.window.push. Um, there's probably extend, I'm guessing. So we're going to take a look at vecdq. And I'm guessing there's an extend. Um, yeah, there's these extents, which I think we should be able to use. So we can do window.extend by tcp.payload for two copy. And this is um, add the 
uh, remainder to our TCP window, right? Um, oh, this is on window. Extend by the remainder of data and make that mute and that should work. Nice, that does exist. So now what I wanna do is I wanna say, um, what do I do if the if it overflows my window? I think I just drop that shit, right? So here, if, uh, okay, let remainder is equal to this. I get a slice to the remainder of data. If remainder.len plus tcp.payload um if this plus window.len is less than or equal to the window size Add it to that. Um, make sure we don't overflow our window size. Right, and that's a U16. And we allocate that much, right? Yep. So basically, make sure that the remainder of data added to the window data is less than or equal to the window size. Otherwise it's greater than, in which case we would have some problems with windowing. So this should never happen, right? This is making sure that it doesn't do the wrong thing, but this should be good now. Um, this is not going to work yet. Nice, assertion failure. So now what we're going to do is we need to grab the bytes. Um, let win let mute window is equal to self dot window dot lock, and this is first trying to consume bytes from our window. And here we'll do. Um, so like a drain. I don't know how well this works from the front, so we'll probably just do this loop. So we'll do while, oh, and we'll get a pointer to the buffer. We'll do this right away. And then we'll do while pointer dot, what editor is this? This is just uh, vim here. While pointer, while window dot len is greater than zero and pointer len is greater than zero, then pointer um, consume bytes from the window. And I think we can do this. Uh, let consumable is equal to core compare min, the smaller between the window length and the pointer length. Compute the number of bytes to consume. Yields the remove items. One, two, three, drain two dot dot. Now I'll give you two, three. I kind of just wanna, yeah, I think I just, I guess I'm just draining from the front. So here we'll do buff dot pointer dot copy uh, consumable copy from slice from window dot drain dot dot consumable okay and then we'll do pointers equal to mutable reference to pointer consumable Right? 
So the first thing we do is we try to consume things directly off of our window. Um, and that drain, oh, that's not guaranteed to be that shape. Yeah, we'll just do this. Uh, while, or for I, I, and zero consume a bull pointer I, I is equal to window dot pop front unwrap and then advance the pointer so we just pop out of the front onto the end of the pointer and this I think should work now and it does because that keeps old things so when there's extra stuff that's padded and buffered by the kernel um, I will actually validate that those things match. And at this point, we're at the end, and we got everything, and they all matched. Right? So, we'll just do this. Print, all verified. Get rid of that print, because it's slowing us down. And then here we go. Oh, I didn't build it, I don't think. Yeah, I didn't build it. Here we go. Doop. All verified. Okay, so that means we got everything. They're in sequence. They're exactly what we were expecting. Um, uh, what terminal are you using? This is just uh, X term. Um... Okay, so that is now all verified. So that means that side is working. But now we want to be able to handle multiple connections. And currently we don't because one of them will consume packets for the other. I mean, technically it'll look like drops, packet drops. But we want to actually handle it a little bit better. So we'll connect twice. Um, yeah, we'll just do, uh, thread client, uh, while true, threading thread. I always fucking forget in Python. It's so stupid that it's not just the function right away. Come on. Come on. Come on. Just give me, give me the good shit. All right, just give me the fucking docs. Thread. Match case. Thread. Red objects name oh target args clients dot run I think I have to do okay, let's try this uh fucking Python man. Uh, oh, ordering matters, I guess. Okay, so I don't think I built that. So now this is going to try it. I want to interleave them. I guess this will technically work because it'll look like packet loss. Like, this will technically work, but it's very dirty. Uh, TCP1. Okay. Maybe it won't work. Doesn't that make a thread?
They apparently both sent. Listen 50. Um, oh, it's not run. I think it's spawn or something. Start. Run, I think, attaches. There we go. Okay. So now we're having packet loss, I think. I think that's effectively what's happening, is packets are, are getting dropped. So it's it's very slow, but it's probably making progress. Just very slowly. Let's see. Come on. Oh, it got stuck. Okay. And is that correct then? Receive, receive. Um. Okay, and what's going on there? So here's what I need to do. I need to add something in net, and I need to say, I'm gonna have a concept of unhandled. So right now, DH, uh, UDP receive, receive. Oh, it's in here. Uh, bind UDP, UDP receive, receive, UDP. That will attempt to get a packet from the UDP binds, which is fine. And then down here, if it wasn't for us, we throw it back on the binds. And so what I wanna do is I wanna make a uh, discard. So this will be pub fn discard and packets. And this is um, discard a packet which was unhandled and thus may need to be uh, placed, may need to be handled by another driver which is expecting it. So basically, whenever you write a filter on networking, you want to discard packets you don't use. Um, and the way that we'll do this is in UDP receive. So when you do raw, transmits, right, you get a packet, and at this point, call that function. If this, if it wasn't for us, then we're going to do self.discard packet, right? Um, and we need to take that basically take ownership of that packet and we discard it and we'll say print discarded packets and that's the same place that we'll do ARPs so EDP binds if it contains this port then insert our stuff drop the lock return out the EDP bind in this case unbind we'll just take the port and then release all of the packets in the queued packet. So it'll go through everything in the bind, it'll release all those packets and give them back to the NIC, which is sweet. And that's actually what I wanna do here. We'll do um, self.driver.release packet packet. And this is give the packet back to the NIC. Technically, you don't have to do that. It will just get freed back to system memory, but for performance, it makes sense. This will then get a packet from the UDP queue. If it's not empty, it'll just pop it off. Um, invoke the function and release the packet, return ret. And that's it. So UDP no longer has that. And then ARP here. So this is receive a raw packet from the network. And I think what we just do is we need to be able to handle ARPs and ARPs will be handled, um, we're just gonna receive from the driver. 
So when you receive something, you will just get a packet lease directly from the driver. And then that means that um, discard, when you discard a packet, we will then check if that packet um, get access to that, and then we attempt to parse it as an ARP. Um, if we have a DTP lease, if we have an ARP, then if all this stuff matches, then we want to reply to the ARP, and then we want to, I guess I give that packet back to the Nick. Uh, honestly, if I just have a packet lease, it just does it for me, and I think this is fine. Because then it, it'll get released back to the NIC automatically. So let's take a look. That way, the, that'll get handed back to the NIC. Hopefully we don't have weird lifetime issues here, but we might. And then I don't have to worry about how I handle it. So if I have a DTP lease, check if it's an ARP. If it's an ARP to me, then I respond to the ARP. And then return. That means we handled the packet. So, sweet. We no longer need packet lease in there. Okay. So now, we want to do the same thing in our TCP stack. Basically, anywhere that does a receive should do that. Um, is this based on small TCP or completely written from scratch? It's completely written from scratch. Uh, I want to get into OS and kernel development. Are any suggestions and resources? There aren't too many great resources. There's OS Dev. There's an OS Dev wiki that has some decent information, but it's pretty pretty hard to. Um, there's not there's not a a great resource. Um, unfortunately. So we're gonna take a look for receives. Anything that's a receive. And I guess we want to do these things. So all of these places are places where we do raw packet receives. We have one here where we, where we do a receive from the driver. That's fine, because that one is how you kind of access everything. Then we have ARPs, kernel source net ARP. And ARPs, when we do a receive, if, if everything is what we want, then we handle it. Otherwise, at this stage, self um, unhandled, what did I call it? Discard packet. This is, we couldn't handle the packet, discard it. Right? So in this situation, we discard that packet, which is good. So this receive is done. It is impossible for you to get this packet and not end up discarding it, right? Yep, because that's just ifs. Here we return, and then in this case, we'll discard that packet, which is great. Um, then UDP receive. This is the only place where we receive a raw packet. Could be any raw packet. Um, none. If let, this returns option. Whoa. That. If it was this, and then here, let ret is equal to this. Um, we'll just do this. Else. Self discard packet was not destined to our port, and then packet was not UDP, uh, discard it. Okay, so in this case, we receive a packet. At this point, is there any place that we can return that we don't discard it? Here, we discard this packet, which looks good. We got UDP. Discard that, and then here, packet was not UDP, discard it. 
Um, oh, and a nun here. So if we handled it, we don't discard it. If we didn't handle it, we want to discard it. And this is only when you're working with raw packets. So like a user doesn't have to do this. This is only internal code that's dealing with raw packets. But basically what we have to deal with is the situation of like we're parsing a TCP stream and we get a UDP packet that's destined to another port. Well, we have to make sure that when we grab a raw packet that we can give that back to whoever can put it in the correct queue. Um, that's basically the problem that we're trying to solve right now. And so we've done that. Uh, Net didn't actually do it. ARP and UDP correctly will call this discard. And now, um, and this discard is where we're going to handle ARPs. This is where we basically, anytime a packet is unhandled by someone who received it, it gives an opportunity to someone else that will put it in UDP queues, we'll put it in TCP windows, you know, we'll parse these packets, we'll do a bunch of different things with these. So in the case of TCP, we have a couple places where we receive packets, and we're going to take a look at all of those. Um, one, two, three. Whoa. Receive. Uh, oh, and this we just do biggies. One, two, three. Okay, perfect. So in this case, in this receive, if we don't like this packet, packet wasn't for us, we will say self dot device dot release, I forgot what I called it, discard packet. If it wasn't for us, in the case that it wasn't an ACK, that's fine. We, do, we don't actually want to give that back to, the, to something else because it was destined for us and we are us and we're trying to handle it and it's just not what we wanted it's an invalid packet so in this case it could be a valid packet it's just not what we want and then down here if it's not tcp packet was not tcp uh disc discard it thank you everyone for all the follows there's been a lot of follows this hour and i haven't really been paying attention i'm so sorry chat i've been a little bit in the groove we're, uh, we're making some good progress. We're about seven hours, 20 minutes in, and we almost have a complete TCP stack implemented, <laughs> which is pretty fucking amazing. Okay, so this receive, this we did the first receive. We discarded a packet here, because it wasn't TCP, so we didn't handle it. In this case, it wasn't for us, so we discard it, which is fine. Every other situation, it's just an invalid packet that we don't care about. So here's the next one. Same thing, else packet wasn't TCP, discard it. Self.device.discard packet. And then we'll do the same thing up here. If it wasn't for us, discard it. for us. And I'm going to kind of clarify this more. I'm going to put this inside the scope. Packet wasn't for us. Discard the packet. In this case, packet was not uh, not TCP. Discard it. Down here, discard PKT. Discard the packet. Then here, discard PKT and receive and in this case, we try to receive. Packet wasn't for us. Same logic here as we've had in other places, I guess. Um, connection, device, discard, packets. And here on the other side, else, uh, packet wasn't TCP, discard it. So at this point, we should release any packet that we don't handle in all situations. This one, this one, and then these three. So discard the packet here if it wasn't to our port. If it wasn't TCP, discard it. And now this should, it'll print discarding packet. 
There we go. So discarded packet basically means that we're giving a packet back and we're potentially handling that. And what we can do here is when we discard a packet, we can uh, first we check if that packet is ARP. If that packet is an ARP packet and it's destined to us and it's requested our IP, then we reply to that at which point we have handled the packet and we return. Here we want to um, handle uh, UDP inbound UDP packets that we have bound ports for. In this case, if let sum UDP is equal to packet UDP, um, and technically I could, I, I'm wasting a few cycles by parsing the, like not parsing IP then whatever, but this is, as I'm not too worried about this because this isn't the like crazy fast path. Um, if we had a UDP port, then we're going to parse this. We're going to say um, let UDP binds is equal to self dot UDP binds dot lock. Uh, get access to UDP binds. Then we're going to say if UDP binds contains. Actually, we can do if let sum bind is equal to, um, and that falls through, yeah. So here we're gonna say if the bind is equal to get mute of udp.dest port, um, print had bind for udp packet. Right, we're just gonna whack that in there like that. Can't part is mutable, here we go, now we can. Okay, uh, check if we have a bind for this port, and in this case, we had a bind for the port. And there's a chance that we don't see any messages here because we just, we just literally don't have any packets, UDP packets coming into, or coming in that we have bound. And it looks like that is the case. So what we're gonna do is, um, I guess I'll make a UDP bind quick. So we'll do uh, let mute UDP is equal to net device bind UDP net dev dot clone, I think. And then I just give it a port. Oh, it'll, it'll pick a port for me. Uh, print bound to this UDP ports uh, UDP this. I swear to God, if I got that right. Oh, okay. Um, Unwrap. Come on, please have port. Yeah, buddy. Doesn't need to be mute. Fuck yeah. So at this stage, we can... Now we're going to start a UDP bind. Bound to UDP this. Now I can do an NC. And I'm going to send a UDP packet to port 65442. Uh, and then you give a host. Oh, a desk port. I can just do that. Um, 192.168. I have no idea what lease that just got. Ping archive. I think that's what it will be. NCU 192.168.1.66 port 65442 ASDF. Nice! So this is basically saying it's getting packets, it's receiving packets, and they're bound to a UDP port, but we're currently not lit, like we're not doing a receive on the UDP port. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stash those into these buffers, and we just do this. We'll just do bind dot push, um, which is a vec DQ, push back. We're gonna push this to the end of the queue, and we'll push the UDP packets which is currently a packet lease. So we'll do a packet lease dot take packet. This is uh, add the packet to the queue uh, for this port. And then return. At that point, we handled it. That's it. So now when we get a packet and it's destined for something else, that packet will get discarded. This will then check if it can generically put it into some queue, and if it can, then that's where it'll get stored. 
Um, okay, so then what I want to do is UDP binds is equal to... So now I want to determine... That's going to make a B tree map. And then when I make a UDP port, kernel source net UDP bind, when I bind to here, I'm going to create a vec DQ. And I guess vec DQ I don't think has with capacity. Oh, you can do it. Perfect. So what we're going to do is we're basically going to have uh, const. Um, this is like uh, packet buffer slots, u size, and then we'll say like 128. And this is number of um, packets which will be buffered for each UDP port which is bound on the system. This is technically a lower bound as Rust may slightly increase the VEC DQ size, uh, but it'll be close. Okay, so then VEC DQ, I will make one with a capacity of this. So a vector, a vec DQ, number of packets which will be buffered for each UDP which is uh, bound on the system. And here we'll just say, we don't even need that info. Um, uh, when this allows packets to be uh, received, even when we're not uh, expecting them, right? Uh, even when we're not directly receiving. <sighs> receiving them, okay, perfect. Packet buffer slots, that's on this. We set up the capacity of that vec DQ, and then when we do UDP binds here, here we make a new empty tree, here we get access to it, and we'll say if packet dot, uh, if bind dot len is equal to bind dot capacity, I think it's called vec dec. I guess it is, it's probably fair. <laughs> that's probably fair. Vec deck. Oh, that's probably true. T tuple. I used to say, I think, I think I used to say integer for integer because I didn't know. I never had anyone in my life say the word in integer when I was learning how to program. <laughs> like, it never came up in my life, so I just fucking winged it. <laughs> we just YOLO'd that shit. Um, this is if the uh, Q is uh, full, drop the packet, right? If it's if the length is equal to the capacity, otherwise, uh, if it's less than the capacity, we'll just say this. Um, else, and I like doing empty else's, uh, drop the packets if there is no room for it. We don't want to use all our memory dynamically for buffering packets. Okay. So then, when the UDP bind gets dropped... When the UDP bind gets dropped, we actually will go through all of the packets in the queue. So we'll remove that packet and then, or that port from our UDP binds, and then we'll release all those packets back to the NIC, uh, which is pretty slick. So then here, get access to UDP binds. If we have an active bind, 
if we are within bounds, if the length is less than the capacity, then we'll push it to the end. Otherwise, we'll just drop the packet because we don't want to buffer forever, and then we return out because we handled it. In all the other situations we haven't handled it, it'll just end up going back to the NIC. Okay, so this will now work. Now I want to do um, handle inbound TCP packets we have bound ports for. And this will be if let sum TCP is equal to packet.tcp get access to TCP connections. And this is TCP connections. And in this place, this is where it all changes. Uh, packet, this is um, receive windows for TCP connections. And this will be a same thing that we have in TCP window, this. We're going to have, for each one, we're going to have an arc lock cell. This allows us to have a copy of the connection, the window directly in here, so we don't have to keep getting this lock on all the connections to access it. So it's an internal internal thing. VecDQ U8, lock interrupts. That is getting gross. Fuck me, there's not a great way to do this, is there? Um, I'm gonna do like that, maybe? Uh, B-tree map. Okay. B-tree map, block cell B-tree map, a port. This is the uh, port. And then an arc lock cell vec DQ. I think we're good. <laughs> 324. So then we're going to do allocate a new bind queue. Well, yeah, it's not that anymore. We actually are going to make this. That's our window. Ha ha. Window is equal to this. It says allocate a window for the TCP. Um, I guess we'll just do it right away. Uh, this way we don't keep we don't allocate it while having a lock held. Allocate a window for the uh, TCP receive data. If we fail, then we just free this. Like who fucking cares? Um, this is like code wise, it's cleaner and this will only ever happen. It'll only ever have to free this if we don't actually get a port. Um, uh, try a bunch of different ports looking for a free one because we're doing random lock cell new vector Q window size with capacity. Then we're going to push that window. And we arc new that. So here we push um, window.clone. This is add a new window for this connection. Then we're going to drop that. And then we're going to make a net address. We're going to resolve that. If, if that fails, um, failed to resolve a server address drop the connection. So here we're going to get access to this again, and then we'll remove it, and then we'll return none. Otherwise, we'll do this, and we'll pass in the window. So at this point, the arc will have two copies. It will be cloned here, and it'll be cloned here in this window. Now on the network side of things, what we're going to do is we're going to handle these. So we'll say let TCP connections is equal to self.tcp connections dot lock and then mute and we'll say check if we have a connection check if we have a connection for this port tcp dash port uh, this is connection we'll just say connection column tcp connections in this case print woo we do and we technically probably want to update that ACK here, but we're probably going to hit this. 
Um, here, we just want to return here as well, because we handled it. So we found, we had an inbound packet that was discarded that should be going to a TCP port. So this is going to look similar to the receive side of things. Woo. Yeah, we're hitting it. That's where our packets are going. That's how we're losing shit. So what we want to do is at this stage, I don't know if I want to act them here. I think it's fine if I don't act them because I'll just let them buffer in the window. That, I think the axe will be active, so what I'll do is... Uh, maybe I will send axe. It's not too hard. Um, <laughs> I knew you'd still be here when I went to bed. I'm glad you got a full eight hours of sleep, though. Well, close to an eight hours of sleep. <laughs> That's good. Um... Okay, so at this point, we know that it's destined for this port. Um, oh, we might be in this receive loop. Uh, I guess it's possible someone else hijacks that. I actually want to check that window. Um, what do I do for receive UDP? Receive UDP is non-blocking. I get access to the UDP binds. If there's something in the queue, then I receive it. So there's technically a race condition here. No, there's not, because I have mutable access to the EDP binds. Yeah, so the only one person can receive on a network card at a time for a given EDP thing. So at this point, exclusive access, we will either grab an existing packet or we will put the packet onto the... I guess here we discard it. Ooh, is that a deadlock? Um, if I'm receiving a UDP packet, I think that's a deadlock, because I will discard, um, return, fuck. Because discard could actually put that on another UDP bind. Um, honestly, we only need it here. Mm. So I kind of, there's like technically a race there where like there could not be something in the bind. Another thing could receive the packet and then you would not check that. So I do want the binds locked here. I want to make sure that get access to the EDP binds. Then, get these, and then here we receive a packet, and then at this point, this point, we can release the UDP binds, core mem drop UDP binds. And receive, that's our raw receive. Yeah, so we get access to the UDP binds, we grab a packet from it, and we return out. Um, and then in this case, we receive it, and then here, we've guaranteed that we've gotten the next packet. Um, and then we'll have to come through and receive again. Because if I... If I put the lock up here, it's possible that I could check whether or not there's a packet in the queue. Another thread using the same nick could actually receive the packet that I wanted to get, put it in the queue, and then I received the wrong thing or nothing. Um, I mean, technically, I don't think it matters because I'd come back because I would end up putting it in the UDP bind. Yeah, that's true. So yeah, in the fast path, we'll just do this. Get access to the UDP binds. I would receive the wrong thing. Maybe I would receive the other threads and I would put it in their queue. And we kind of just end up chasing each other. But that'll guarantee you that because I think there's a deadlock there because we could have the UDP binds. Okay, that aside, now what I want to do is when I'm receiving something, it's possible that another thread received it and I might have to check the window. 
So before I do a receive, I think I want to unconditionally check this. Um, right? So before I do an actual receive from the device, I want to attempt to get it from the window. I mean, does it really matter? I'm just gonna drop it. So I'm gonna ack it. Um, no, I think I wanna do this. So we'll say if pointer len is zero break uh, satisfied receive from the uh, window. If the pointer length is zero, then we just break out and we don't have to do anything. Otherwise, we'll go down here and we'll do all this shit where we'll discard packets and stuff. But we only have that lock, that window lock. We grab it here and discard is out that's outside of the scope. Okay. So that'll give us the window size. So we'll report the size of the window. And then things will get put into there here. So here we'll say, um, and this is uh, let two stash is equal to core compare min, the smaller between the window size, this is a TCP window size, make that pub. The TCP window size minus the uh, this is the window, right? We're going to take the window size and we're going to subtract the window length. So that is the number of bytes remaining in the window. The smaller between that and the um, tcp.payload.len. So this is determine how much we can store in our window. And we'll do, oh, I need access to the con connection, don't I? Oh, shit. Shit. Oh. So I need to update the like act state. Don't I? I don't necessarily have to. I can derive that from the window. I want to act stuff right away, I think. Shit. Did I architect myself into a, a hole? Well, I wouldn't have a lock on this specific TCP connection. Um... I would never discard a packet that is for my own connection, which means I wouldn't have a lock open for my own TCP connection while I'm sending, as long as the lock is internal to the TCP connection. And then if I move those internal, then I can use TCP to do send receive stuff. So I think what that means is that this, this TCP connection, I might actually return an arc to that when you connect, and then everything that you do on TCP connection is mutable, and then I have an internal lock. Shit. 
Because I need to be able to send axe, I think. Otherwise, I'm just going to get blasted by packets from the server. When I receive something, I want to send axe right away. Um, and to do that, we will... Um, shit. How do I do that? I can return an arc? I think that's what I have to do. We just gotta, we just gotta do some weird shit. Fuck. Fuck. Ah, oh, now we gotta re-architect shit for like a few minutes. Um, okay, um. Uh, TCP connection contains internally an int, a, a, a tcp connection int, tcp connection, this is a pub struct tcp connection, and then we're going to do, this is just going to wrap something so it's not public, it's going to be an arc, lock cell, tcp connection int, Lock interrupts. Okay, so I return a, T a TCP connection. Oh my god, and everything's gonna break for a while. Fuck, 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 that's a lot of breakage. Oh, that's a lot of breakage. Uh, 241, two stash, two stash, that's this. Just comment this out. Okay. Okay, and then we gotta decide. Uh, what's the multiple window resizing trick? I use my cursor. I use the mouse mode. I fucking love it, dude. Calm down, take a cookie. Revert, commit, reapply. Take a deep breath. I'm spooked, man. Ah, this is scary shit, dude. Oh, this is so scary. This is uh, active TCP connections. We've got a port. It maps to a TCP connection. The lock cell protects the B tree map. Oh, am I gonna get fucking deadlocked? Yeah, 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 it's a tuple, it's a tuple, yeah, 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 it's, yeah, uh, TP connections, this should be fine, that'll get it for the port, that should still work, and this is connection now, okay, easy, now, ever that we do TCP connection, pretty much has to change, this, this is now a self, let's, Connection is self dot zero dot lock. Get mutable access to the TCP connection. Um, here receive same shit. Um, get mutable access to the TCP connection. Uh, self. Okay, I think ever that I do a self, self dot becomes connection dot g. That should clean up a lot of the errors. Okay, it looks like it did. Self connection. Same thing here. Uh, drop a TCP connection. You can access to that. Remove it. Ooh. Um. I can never drop it. I can't drop it. Fuck. No, I can drop it. I dropped the TCP connection. 
which is mutable because the arc inside. Yeah, we're fine. We're fine. Whew. I'm sweating. Drop. Get the lock for the TCP connections. Remove the port. And then we drop ourselves. I think that should work. Uh, actually fucking work. 437. In this case, connection. We're going to make a new connection here, which is a, a TCP connection, which contains a lock, an arc, new lock cell new of a TCP connection int. Oof -da. Ports. Let con. Uh, this is ret. And then let connection is equal to ret dot lock. And I think that's probably going to panic getting access to that connection in some cases. Because uh, we'll do that in the interrupt handler. So. But it's not too bad. Um, use crates net TCP TCP connection. Three thirteen. Device. Ooh, shit. Shit. We can make this work. self dot zero dot lock dot device uh, okay three sixteen ports no this is fine self dot zero dot lock I think this is fine got access to the TCP connection and I should be able to drop the arc because I don't have to take the lock so here I'll do get access to the device, and then here, remove the ports. Window.clone, correct. The connection will add I don't know, we might as well just do this with the lock held. We get the server. If we fail to get the server, return none. Don't drop TCP connections. We still have TCP connections. At this point, we've made TCP connections. So I can do TCP connections inserts. So if it doesn't contain the key, we're gonna we're gonna resolve the ARP. I could maybe fill in the ARP by having it be none, because we're going to have this lock held while we ARP, but, like, whatever. Insert a new TCP connection of ret.0.clone. Um, and then core mem drop TCP connections. And this is register... This TCP connection. Oh shit, and we don't want drop on that. Uh, I guess that's gonna take the int, isn't it? Because drop will call it, and we don't want drop to get invoked when we drop that connection. We'll see what happens, but this is gonna fail. Um, 365, lock not found on ret dot zero dot lock. Then at the end, we return some ret. Expected arc 442. Correct, it's a TCP connection. Fuck. Now we got the hard ones.
Fuck. Fuck. <laughs> I'm, str I'm struggling. Um. Device is connection. It's a arc. Um. Get access to the device uh, as a new as a new uh, arc. Right? Unless I can do something better. But I'm pretty sure this should be fine. Now we're not using connection for these. We just use device. Please. Please. 189. 76. Um, we don't need a lock on window anymore. We don't need a lock on the window anymore. I think that's the trick. Just a vec DQ. Fuck yeah, clean. Clean. Window is just a vec DQ with capacity window size as you size. Okay. One seventy six window connection window window dot lock lock connection dot window dude we're gonna have lifetimes from this I, I swear it's just so hard to think through what this, like, everything we need to do. I mean, technically that, that is different. Are we fine? I don't know. There's no way, man. Holy shit. Uh, 214. Oh, yeah, that's just an easy error. Come on. Uh, connection. Come on. Now we get the borrow checker errors. 177. 226, Um, get a new reference to the device to break some lifetimes. Uh, 
Come on. Come on. It's gonna be a fucking miracle. Move out of Kerr happens here. That clone. Three seventy five. Same shit. Uh, break some life times by getting a new device reference. Ross just can't quite reason about that. <sighs> 323. Um... Clone. That's the device. Okay. 429. Move out of ret. Borrow happens there. Huh. Drop the connection. Fuck yeah, it builds. <laughs> we did it. Okay, woo. Now, we are back to here. Now what we can do... <sighs> determine how much we can store in our window. Now we can do... Connection. And yeah. Do I just not want to act it at all? Yeah, I think so. I think if TCP window size minus com dot window dot len is greater than or equal to number of remaining bytes, uh, here, let window remainder is equal to this, uh, get remainder of bytes in our window. If uh, tcp.payload.len is greater than the window remainder return uh, can't store something larger than our window at which point uh, let con is con.lock Mute. I get mutable access to the TCP connection. I guess another core could have that active. I think deadlocks are possible here. Are they? If another thread receives a packet that's destined to our TCP bind and we are currently trying to receive on it, then we have the lock. The other core will block and we're blocking until we get the packet. And that's a silent deadlock. Shit. Is that just a rare enough situation where I just drop the packet if I can't get the lock? Well, we'll just do this. Con.window.extend from tcp.payload. 
um, extend the window and then woo. And then I technically want to send an ack here. We'll just print woo. Uh, window rem. Lock. Zero to lock. And I shouldn't have access to that field? Correct. I think I maybe just try lock. And if I can't get the lock, then I just drop the fucking packet. And then that'll get retransmit just because it's TCP. So, like, this is more of, like, a hint. So, it'll be, like, um, discard. Packets. TCP connection, and this is pub fn discard self packets packet lease, and this is um, handle a packet which is destined for our window. However, we don't handle a packet which is destined for a window. However, we don't. Um, Handle packet which is destined for a window. How are we don't currently uh, uh yeah, which is destined for a window. Okay, we'll just say that. Um and we can probably have that take a P TCP r just right away. Right? We'll pass this TCP, so it's parsed. Yep, and this doesn't have, that doesn't need to be pub anymore. Sweet, it's the correct way to do it. Oh, we do need that, but. Get the number of bytes in our window. 76, get mutable access to the TCP connection. Cool. Get remainder of bytes in the window. Get the remainder. And I could actually release the lock. I could acquire and release the lock every packet or something. So I can prevent the deadlock. It's doable. If the payload length exceeds the window remainder, we can't do anything. In this case, we'll extend the window. Oh, and this is self.0. Okay, and then this is TCP. It's the parse TCP packet, which honestly we can just do by ref. Discard. And then we're just going to return because we handled it. Hey! So now we should hit woos again. And now we just want to act that shit. Uh... Oh, yeah, because now we're fucking up windows. So if we discarded a packet, it ends up here. And then, this is the same as when we extend a window here. We need to update the server state. And then we want to send an ACK. TCP payload length, right? 
Uh, extend the window. Update the state. And then here, we're going to send an act. Okay, so at that point, we will ack that packet, and let's see if I can do a connection.device now. I think for this one I might be able to. Yeah. So allocate a packet, create a new TCP packet, ack the device, or ack the, send an ack. So update these sequences. Um, and this is on receive, right? It's basically the same logic here. Um, oops. If if it's not an act, just return. So we don't care about it. And then in this stage, we don't support these. That's going to panic, so we're going to bring everything down. OK. Now, these don't need to be mute anymore. OK, so I'm fucking scared. Holy shit! Holy shit! It just works! <laughs> we just did it! <laughs> just a, a large refactor later, and it works. And it works as intended, too. I still think it's possible to deadlock. But I would just have to tighten the locks that I do. But yeah, now we're buffering packets. If we're receiving the wrong packets, uh, and this should be going fast. Ooh, deadlock detected 354. I can I can handle that. That's probably on drop. Um, drop. Mm, I'm gonna press X to doubt there. Where did I initially have that lock? How would I ever drop a TCP connection? It's in this. Oh, yeah, yeah, I theorized this. Um, I think if I just forget it. Because mm, it's going to call drop on that. And I'm going to call drop on the arc, but I don't want to drop the container of the arc, the internal value. So what's the problem here? Um, I'm locking that. I then remove that connection, and since I made a TCP connection, I want to store the internal, and then that solves the problem. The internal one. Dropping this will free the net device. It'll be an arc to this. It'll decrease the ref count. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we gotta make that. We do make it pub. There's nothing you can do with this structure. So then this is what I actually wanna store in TCP connections. So I'm gonna store this. Mmm, beautiful. TCP connection internal. So I sort of the internals, 239, oop, discard. Ah, fuck, I don't have access to discard. Oh, I can impl discard on that. Impl TCP connection. Internal. I guess this will be mute then. Can 
connection con dot turns into self dot g. Okay, then discard we don't have lock discard. 401. This is it. Red dot clone. That's it. Complete. Yes. No warnings, no errors. Correct. No warnings, no errors. Okay, and then we can get rid of the print in Python. Just because it's slow. <sighs> Here we go. Fuck. Instant. On net. Someone's accessing that. Why? I already have the connections lock. Okay. Um, I get that in drop. I have that in connect. I'm discarding a packet, and I have the connection lock, which would happen. I don't think this always happens. Yeah, it doesn't always happen. Let's see if we can receive it here. It's a, it's a true race. Sent. All verified. Okay. And then sometimes this will fail. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Uh, just fail. This should unwrap. Yep. You son of a bitch. It really like failing before. This is gonna happen if I have the connection lock when I discard a packet. And that happens anywhere that I can discard. I can't have the connection lock here. Can't have it here, can't have it here. I can't have it here. I can have it in one spot, I think. No, I dropped TCP connections. TCP connections, okay, here I get it. But I can never drop the TCP connection. Maybe that is what was happening. There is a race that exists. Let's pull, um, and then this will likely crash. This will crash with interrupt in the wrong mode. I shouldn't be able to get. Uh, cause I need to make that a lock no preempt. I just want to see. Okay. That couldn't download from the server. Okay. We have a net map. Oops. Um, there we go. So this should likely fail. Maybe. I want this to just loop some packets. While true, just fucking blast the client. And then we'll put a little sleep in here. Oops. 
four I I and zero Okay, come on. Come on. Ugh, no time. Fuck. Is that DWM? Hell yeah it is. Come on. Come on, panic. Panic, because you get a packet that you're not supposed to have. Oh, those binds get dropped. That's why. Those are EDP binds, or the TCP binds get dropped. Okay, let's try this. This is going to be on all threads. Which I'm kind of scared. Wow, that was all threads using the stack. Um. Oh, that's, I think that's deadlocked. I think I did it. I think I did what I theorized. I think I did what I theorized. The silent deadlock. Um, and that happened if another thread receives something while I had the lock open, which is true. So I'm in receive. I have a lock on the connection. I want to make sure that I... I want to make sure that I drop the lock... I guess if I drop it every packet, and here we can do uh, self dot zero dot lock dot device dot clone. This should theoretically mean that I no longer permanently have this lock. Um. In send, I do receive, okay. Uh, Self.zero.lock. We're definitely probably hurting our perf a little bit with some of these locks, but whatever. It's not too big of a deal. So we lock the connection. This guarantees that we never spin forever. Ooh. Can that deadlock itself? No, because if a packet was destined for it, yeah. So any place we receive now, we actually back off because we eventually release the lock, ex with the exception of TCP connect, but it's not in the connection list. Oh yeah. Let's not register the connection until the end. That's probably our That's probably our issue. 400 ret.0.lock 473 uh 4 mem drop connection should be able to do this register the connection at the end and then okay so we basically have the lock on connections until we complete the whole like sin act timed out when attempting to take lock oh yeah I can recover from that now 356 deadlock. That happens if I can't. Oh, I can drop ret here. Here, if I time out on a connection, which is what I'm doing. 
Nice. Um... I guess that doesn't get dropped in that order? It's fucking weird, really? Oh, we're not timing out, we're active reset. But, is that really the case in Rust? Those are the only return points. Three fifty-nine. Oh yeah, because it expects that to be in there. Um. So I think this will be a deadlock, and if I add. I'm going to register the connection right away. So I create the TCP connection, then I'm going to register the connection. Now, I bind all these things, and then we fail, I guess. Is it this deadlock? Those that that'll time out eventually and give us control again. Already found like twenty things I like. Hell yeah, man. We can't soft reboot right now. I'm gonna see if I can recover from this lock. Drop TCP connections. Yeah, because this is created first. Yeah, they get dropped in that order. So I need to explicitly drop it in the opposite order. That's some shit, dude. All right, let's... Reboot. Do you have a stream schedule? I do not. If we timed out, then we drop. If we actively got rejected, then we drop TCP connections, we return none. Otherwise, we eventually drop the connection at the end and we return red. Let's try it on this. Unwrap on non value. That's looking good. I think we fixed it. I think we fixed it. 101. That's just unwrapping because it failed to connect. But there's that's fine. Yeah, I think that drop is required, because otherwise we deadlock. So we have to drop that connection. We have to drop that connection. I think that is that deadlock. And then for the TCP side of things, we can no longer deadlock, because while we're looping, we actually release it temporarily, which means we get a new ticket, since they're fair locks. Yep. Unwrap on a none. Basically, this means we fail to connect, which is fair but we're no longer getting that deadlock. And we wanna do this a couple times because we really wanna make sure that's the case. There, another core came online. Once again, none of them can contact the server, but we're not getting deadlocked again. And I think that makes sense. Really weird edge case there. Okay, test, here we go. It's, it, it deadlocked. One of them passed. One of the cores made it. Oh, that, uh, only one of the cores sent is what happened. Um. Let's 
So I did ascend sent A sent B Maybe it's like a print deadlock. Well, we'll see. In this case, we'll try it here. Hopefully we get stuck. Because we can test it a lot faster here. Um. What is this? It's on the OS DevNet, Verber 2. One on one one. I can do that. Um, one on one nineteen. Can't reach it. Why can't it reach it? It's technically a different network card, but the offloading sh should still work. And that, that deadlocks. Oh yeah. Is that just panicking in a dramatic way? If I don't go to fuzz, does it work? This is for some reason not routing, but we'll do a reboot. I think that might be getting stuck in a loop in the... Yeah, I think that's getting stuck in an interrupt handler. I feel like I should be able to panic there. It's technically an exception, so it's actually a really hard problem. I don't know why I can't route to this network, though. I use 101.1. What am I binding to in Python? Zeros. All right, we'll see if we get stuck here. Maybe the deadlock is still possible. Sent, and then it's fucked. Hmm. Now is that on connection? What if I do this? Well, yeah, the connects are going to cause the receive traffic. Um, oh. Well, I'm glad it's not the exception thing because that should panic. And panic should work inside of an exception. Um, I guess it's here. Um, here we're going to send a sin, uh, send the sin. This loop, I think, is killing me because I had it open permanently. 
uh, wait for the sin ack. And then here, this is ack the sin ack. Here we regain the connection. I think this fixes that. We don't have a con there. This means I won't have that lock permanently open anymore. I didn't think it would matter in that case because I have a lock on the TCP connections. That might be an issue too. Um, where's that use? Okay. Now, on one core, there's no way we get this lock. We have the lock until we create this, at which point we release the lock. We then, oh, this maybe could fuck us when that lock is held. That can discard. Not for our own, though. Can another cord hit that? We have this lock. We send an ARP. Another core responds to the ARP. Oh, that's fine. I think. Come on. Come on. 235 deadlock. On net. Here. I disagree. Fuck. That's not it. What the fuck? Um... Hmm... Panic, timeout. I feel like I should be able to hit that timeout. I don't know why I'm not. Fuck, what could it be? God, I have to reboot that server every fucking time, too. Hmm. <laughs> See you around, man. Thanks for all the... Thanks for the luck. Fuck. I mean, like, technically it works if you don't, like, really hang hit it so hard. <laughs> it shouldn't be a deadlock. It could be a um all right 
We got a single core. Deadlock detected. Okay, first of all, we need to fix that. 235. Okay, it's possible that we discard a packet while we have the TCP connection lock. Nope. Nope, 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 nope. No, we dropped TCP connections. Um... How? That's the only way that can happen. So let's first figure out single core what the fuck this lock is. Um... So that calls discard. Hmm. That locks the connection, which is fine. But we, somewhere we have TCP connections locked. What did you go to school for? I didn't go to school. I'm uneducated. Damn right. All right, unless we can discard in a discard in this can we discard in that state? We cannot. We cannot. Okay, so it's not that. We're not hitting discard in a discard. Here we can lock. Lock the TCP connection. This can call discard. This can discard. And if there's a TCP packet. Ah. Parlay Vux. We're just going to say server is none. That makes sense. Drop the connections. Resolve the server using ARP. So we no longer have that lock. Now we can do um, we'll just do this. It's gross, but uh, con dot zero dot <laughs> you like my French <laughs> red dot zero dot lock. dot server is some server it's not it's some server i guess that doesn't have to be a, a none i can do net net address i don't know add just default on here it's fucking empty default that shit thanks for all the follows Nanotech leet? Relate? Relate, relate, actually. Relate. Um. Nope. 
Go to Fulton IPv4 address. Well, that's a sack of shit. Hell yeah. 35? Connection dot server. From salt. Okay. That'll fix this deadlock. We should see two foot waffs every time we boot. Okay. Now the question is, was that deadlock the deadlock that was killing us on multiple cores? And I would say probably no, maybe. Uh, actually, possibly. Very, very possibly, quite, maybe. Yes! That's all cores. Just smashing that like button. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Mm, two, three, four, five. Wait, what? Four? What? Oh, it got stuck. Fuck, damn it. Oh, maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe it did. I don't know. Um, no, it's it's broken. Something's broken there. Something's broken. Sent A. That's fair. Okay. Eight. Okay, so sometimes it gets stuck here. Or seven cent. But at least these are recoverable locks. Um, connected. Open my core ID. So now I'll print that I connected. And then all we have to do is go until it gets stuck. Okay. Beautiful. But we can still... Oh, this one's the hard brick. Son of a bitch. The only way that can happen... The only way... God, we got some locks going on. If I got rid of this... Actually, I'm going to specifically only get rid of this. Just to see if that breaks it. If it does, that teaches us a lot, right? That's going to teach us if it's the discard or if it's the TCP connection. Is this online yet? Not yet. All right, first let's see if it happens if we don't have the server there. Okay.
Looks good. Um, I think this is maybe acceptable. Not getting stuck. Not getting stuck. Um, I think that's okay. Um, okay, that like got broken. So sometimes, so all of them connected, but not all of them past that stage. Um, hmm. Shit. So sometimes they get stuck. It's relatively rare. Um. Do you not like my TCP concert content, Moss? Sounds like a shame. Fuck my view boss. Ooh. Oh, these are good, dude. I like these memes right here. <laughs> now, I'm just curious what this dude has to say. I could ban him. But it, it, he does seem like he has some... Uh, he does have some edgy uh, things. I don't know. I, I love edginess, man. I'm a big fan of edginess. I always love to see. He's not trolling. He probably is. If he's not trolling, it's pretty sad. <laughs> and if he is trolling, it's a pretty shitty troll. <laughs> Come to chat the first thing I see. Interesting. The guy is more edgy than the Python game guy. Oh, yeah. Okay. I, man, I just don't... I don't know how I'm going to debug this, man. Like, these, these sequencing things are fine. Pretty low effort troll, yeah. I, I miss when trolling was actually a little bit more advanced, and it wasn't just like trying to just yell and scream, and you like actually tried to, you know, pick at someone. Ah, I see. There we go. There's the. There it's actually trolling. Okay. Okay. Now we now we see that it's actually trolling. <laughs> now it's just a sad troll. Ah, <laughs> oh, fuck. All right, be right back.
All right, so uh, we got to figure out what the fuck's going on here. Um, you ever seen bug hunting popular software? No, I'll never stream uh, bug hunting on something that is like actual, actually relevant. Um, okay. It's just it's just too risky. It's, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna find bugs on stream. It's just not it's not appropriate. Those things should be reported responsibly, and they shouldn't be found on a stream where they can't be like, you know, yeah, yep, no problem. I would love to. <laughs> I absolutely would if it like was sane. Yeah, responsible disclosure. Um, you know, I just don't know. The like hard lock where they get really stuck yeah and there can be okay i guess yeah if i send the packet fast enough then i will actually get some stuff from it i might need to probably add support from this but like unwrap 103 so that's i don't know it definitely has something to do with this so I'm gonna discard, I'm gonna call discard, but I'm not going to actually discard anything. But I will do a, oops, discard, and then I'll do a time sleep um, return. Okay, so now we're just gonna sleep for a little bit. See if that allows us to hit this lock and it does we bricked it real good so at least we know that the issue is we're deadlocking and trying to get this connection lock and then someone else is never releasing it <laughs> better than indecent exposure uh lock okay that lock doesn't live because we clone this device out then we have this lock. We can while here. If it wasn't for us, we discard it. At which point, we can get the connection lock and we can throw it away. And this is, it wasn't even TCP. Throw it in the trash. What about malware reversing streams? I'm not a big fan of malware reversing. I just don't really do any malware related things. It's just not an interest of mine. Okay, we've got this lock here on the connection. We've got a loop here, but this loop should terminate. We do a receive, do a discard. But I don't think that can get stuck in a loop. That can't. Freeing that. We lock the connection. Ooh. Is it the, the drop? Is it the drop? We're just going to not do anything and drop? I think it's because I get the lock for the connection. And then I get the lock for the TCP connections. And if I'm in this state... I think that might be it. Let's, we're grasping at straws. <laughs> Thanks, mods. I didn't even see his most recent messages. Some, some low effort trolling. Why don't you just go to a stream where you can get a rise out of people, man? No one here gives a fuck. Like, no one even remotely gave a fuck, <laughs> dude. <laughs> and thanks, Desu. Um, make your own OS? Yep, that's what we're working on. We already made it. We're just kind of making it better now. <laughs> your mother was a hamster and your father smelled of elderberries. Oh, some good old Monty Python. I wonder if it's these locks.
All right. Um. So let's see here. Sent a. Okay, that got bricked. Nice. Wait, wait. We recovered it. Maybe if I send enough Z's? Oh, eventually I send enough Z's. Oh, it's actually the sleeps in this case. I don't know if it's actually getting st stuck. So we'll do this. Okay. Uh, it looks like this can get stuck. So it's not drop. Really? Like, I thought that was what the issue was going to be. Can access the TCP connection. Um... Okay. Get that. Um Yeah, I don't know if that's Oh, what would be the issue? This is so tough cuz I have to I don't think I have the TCP connections lock. Okay, so we just got to whittle this down more. We'll do time, sleep. We'll sleep a little bit. We'll sleep for a second. So we'll make sure all the connections are done before we do the sends. And then we'll see if it's a relation to the connections or with the sends. Because we kind of have to whittle down approximately what this is related to. Because if, it, like... We just have no way of knowing in this case. Um, yeah, we have no way of really knowing what's actually fucking breaking it. Okay. Do, do, do. Just start calling your bugs flash wounds. Oh, that's pretty good. I like that. All right, so now we're going to sleep. And since we sleep a little bit, that'll guarantee that the connects are done. Oh, we need to start the server. Have you written the TCP stack from scratch? Yes. Ooh, okay. One second. Okay, it got stuck. It got stuck. Is it recoverable? Nope. Son of a bitch. Guess we go right around town. Ah. All right, what if we... Yeah, let's just start minimizing some of this down. Let's not bind UDP. We'll do a TCP connection. We'll do just this. And that looks pretty good. So I'll see if this gets stuck. Honestly, let's just see if this gets stuck. Literally only connecting. 
Um, only going to do connecting. Come on. Do. Oh, it got stuck. Okay. That is really good data. <laughs> that is really good data. That means we know for a fact it has to do with the connection stage. So we don't care about really anything else except the connect. Um, and then here, we'll time sleep. We're going to sleep for a long time. It's only 100 seconds. That's, that's a long time. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to sleep. That makes sure I don't release the device, because otherwise I'm going to drop the device. I, if I drop the device, then I don't know. I think that halt actually does it. But we're going to sleep holding that device lock. I'm pretty sure this is still going to fail. This is still going to get stuck. Nine hours? Oh, hell yeah. No problem. Easy peasy. <laughs> Doesn't sleep, only time sleep. Come on. Nice, nice. Yeah, it broke. Fuck yeah. Okay, so that means the only place that it could possibly be is in here. We get the TCP connection lock. Okay, we check the port. If the port is already bound, then we continue. Well, we don't care. Then we try a new port. We get the lock again. And that lock goes out of scope here, so we would drop it. Okay. Then we create a new lock cell. Unless it's because I'm hitting that in an interrupt handler or an exception handler. Get that rebooting. Um, Nothing here should get the TCP connection lock. So we just insert there. So I don't think that's it. Resolve the net address. So at this stage, we are potentially discarding packets. We could get a TCP packet here when we're resolving a net address for an ARP. In which case, that packet will end up getting blasted over to discard on one of the other cores. Because let's say one core comes through, it creates the TCP session. Another one comes through, it's trying to do an ARP. And then it goes to discard that packet. And to discard that packet, it grabs the TCP connection lock which it can't get because someone else is blocking on that. This should be fixed time. Um, I mean, this causes allocations, but I don't think it's allocation related. Okay, let's just return it here. Um, if I do a TCP connection, TCP connections, lock that, if that exists, okay, I can just return none here. Let's return none here. So I don't think this is it. Oh, shit. Is this because I insert the connection before 
I insert a connection and then I can potentially go down here where I go to discard that connection and like none of this stuff is set up yet. Yeah, I should not register this until I have, I shouldn't register that until I have created the actual connection. So let's see if this does the trick. Okay. And why didn't we want to have that lock before? Oh, because we were concerned that we would have issues if we did... If that server's not there, we then deadlock, right? If this server's not running, we deadlock. Correct. And to fix that, we can manually drop TCP connections. Oh, do I have to do that? I don't think so. Not anymore. Okay. So any early return site, there I return and here I return. So in those early return sites, I have to do that. I can't remember. There was a reason why I couldn't do this. Oh yeah, because I could drop that. And that's where we were before. So we do this, make this mute. So now we will lock, send the sin. Oops. This is just connection, con. This should build rets. And in this case, we won't actually register it because the drop handler deregisters it. So here, we will insert rets is equal to arc new lock cell new packet. Nope. Connection. Con uh, ret.clone, we insert into TCP connections. And then at this point, we can drop that. Uh, this is technically a TCP connection. And this is a ret.0.clone. OK, this should now work. 398, unused. Connection. We'll do that for now. Um, I guess it's possible. Resolve that net address. I think I want to do that outside of this. Resolve the server, then we get the TCP connections, then we do this, which is just some allocations. Here we pass the server. We then make the sin, send that off, wait for the ACK, and then at the end, we then 98 in main. Okay, that's fine. Okay, server's not responding. Good. Server's up, connected, connected. Connected. Yeah, I mean, I think before, well, I mean, definitely before, we had a situation where the TCP connection was being registered and we would like handle it as if it exists. Okay, what's happening here? I can still reboot out of there. What's happening in this state? 
<sighs> Fuck. Block. Print. Yeah, sometimes, yeah. Getting connections lock. These locks are just brutal, man. These are really tough. I mean, technically, like, one of the biggest issues is I have two locks right now. If I only had one lock, if I... If I got the TCP connection lock, anytime I wanted to do TCP, it might be fine. Like, there are ways we could architect this, but I do like this because it allows the loosest amount of lock contention. And then we'll just do this. Um, core ID got connections lock um unwrap on a nun 98 I think that's just Linux fucking off. I could up my connection timeout. I'm guessing the Python server just like somehow doesn't respond for a whole hundred millis. Once, okay. So one of those bugs that adding the prints fixes it. 98, okay. So, like, sometimes we can't connect. Um, oh, yeah, we don't handle drop packets right now. And I have drop packets on. In the case of a timeout, we send this packet. This should be fine in all conditions. So I guess we got to get rid of these prints. Okay, that's bricked. Nice. So what else do I lock in here though? I don't lock anything else. It's just this. This is the only lock I obtain. But I have this lock. Another thread could potentially be doing TCP, UDP, who knows what, could be doing this. That would potentially cause something to get discarded. That would then require that we get a lock. We got a TCP connection lock. And then we get a lock on this. I don't know. Maybe I just try lock it. Maybe I drop the TCP connection lock before grabbing the connection lock. It's gross, but I could. I could do this. Right? Thank you, Ak, Akvyamov, Pavel. Thank you so much for the 15 viewers. I have no idea how close I am on your name pronunciation, but thank you so much. All right. Lock. Connection clone. And... Let's see. Pack. 
packet TCP, get access to TCP connections. Writing a TCP server? We're writing a, a, a whole TCP stack. But yeah, basically. Okay, so we can clone the connection, and then we can do a core mem drop TCP connections. And it's kind of weird, but it basically means that we don't have this lock while having this lock. Which might fix it. We know that it crashes in the current state. I can't touch anything else. But we'll clone that connection. It's really fucking gross. But it, it guarantees that we drop that. So we discard that. So, but yeah, I'm, I'm, like, I think it's a situation where I have this lock. I definitely can have this lock held. I guess someone can try and get this lock, and then we are doing discard, discard, discard. What, um... We're in probably ARP. This is going to lock the DHCP lease. Um. And then we can do a discard when we have the DHP lock held. Oh, yeah. Well, that's a problem. Couldn't handle the packet, discard it. And in this case, we have the DHP lease lock. And if we go to discard, dude, it's probably not even, we're probably debugging the wrong thing this whole time. Um, discard will get the DHP lease lock, so that's, uh, that's an issue, right? Oh, that doesn't have the lock held. No, that asrafs, unwraps. R-I-P. No, that'll, that'll have that lock held. So we want this IPv4 adder. And this is going to fail, but we'll clone that shit. It's literally... No, it's already copying that. Yeah, I don't think that lock is actually held. I don't think that lock is held. Okay, what did we, what did we change? We changed... We dropped that TCP lock. Man, it's fucking dead, dude. God damn it. <laughs> Oh. Discard. We get the DHP lease lock. All right. Print. Discarding. 